This is Dan Lexi from Dan Schultz Outdoors, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. Hey y'all, I'm Johnny. And I'm Colleen. And, and we're, we're the Keel Quest. Quest. And, and we, we want, want you to keep, to keep the, the adventures, adventures alive. alive. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, this is Darren from Ride Paddle Repeat, encouraging you to keep the adventures alive. This is David from Beachley Ironworks saying keep the adventures alive. I'm Jay, that's skill. From Jay's way, keep the ventures alive. Hi, I'm Kevin Collin, the Happy Camper. Remember, keep the adventures alive. Awesome! Woo, buddy! Shug here! Keep the adventures alive. I am. Ethan here, the Avid Outdoorsy Guy, reminding you to keep the adventures alive. We're John and Aaron. Keep the adventures alive. Hey everyone, it's Kylan from Lure of the North, and I encourage you to keep the adventures alive. This is Sky North telling you, keep the adventures alive. And now on with the show. Tonight's episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show is brought to you by OTG Meals. Fresh, freeze-dried, small-batch meals made for people on the go. Algonquin Outfitters, with four key locations in and around Algonquin Park to serve your backcountry needs. Kid Products, stick stoves and reflector ovens proudly made in Canada. And Novicraft Canoes, connecting you with nature in Canadian-made canoes since 1970. Well, happy Tuesday evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show, a show that brings you a lot closer to the great outdoors. My name is Dennis, also known as Canoe Hound, and if this is your first time joining us here on this fine Tuesday night, well, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully, we'll make a believer out of you and uh, make you hit that subscribe button and come on back and uh, enjoy some of our shows that we have here. Uh, we got a really cool show for you tonight, a uh, show that I've been wanting to bring for quite a long time. We'll be discussing uh, GPS messaging devices and uh, just giving everybody a little bit of a lowdown on them uh, in case you are looking maybe to purchase one of these things in the future. Uh, might be a good opportunity, opportunity for you to actually learn a little bit more about them. Uh, before we do introduce uh, tonight's panel and, uh, you know, topic, we will, uh, I'm just going to give you a few of our updates and things like that, just like I always do. Uh, give the boys in the basement there a chance to, uh, to get themselves all set up here and uh, yeah, we're going to move on with the evening. Uh, last week I had David Bain on and uh, we were discussing the Ontario Winter Camping Symposium, which is uh, coming up on November the 5th. It's the fourth annual event. 
if uh, if you're ever learning or wanting to learn anything about winter camping and uh, you're looking to hear some great stories from four great presenters uh, and you live in southern Ontario or, you know, within a, a fairly reasonable drive, you might want to pick up tickets for this. The event's uh, selling fast. Uh, it will most likely be a sellout again this year as it always is and you know what uh it's a great show and that is uh november the 5th and it's in waterloo ontario so if uh if you haven't already got tickets and you're looking to buy tickets i will just put the link right up here on the screen for you right now there it is on screen uh feel free to jot that down and after the show go pick up your tickets and as i mentioned get your your tickets early because uh they will most likely sell out uh we got a few birthday and uh, wishes, a few birthday wishes here uh, that come in this week. Uh, first, uh, happy belated birthday to Johnny Keel from the YouTube channel Keel Quest. I uh, hope you made the best of your day, Johnny. Uh, I seen some Instagram posts there that uh, Colleen really did up your little uh, celebration or a little sneaky party or whatever for you there. So congratulations on that. Hope you had a great day. And then uh, a past guest on our show. I don't know if everybody remembers Matt Hahn. He is a uh, videographer. Uh, he just became engaged this past week to uh, Jessica Armstrong, his longtime girlfriend. I wish you both a, a long lifetime of happiness. Uh, you know what? If anybody has any well wishes or birthdays or anniversaries or an event coming up and you want to, you know, kind of announce here, please do drop me an email at canoehound at gmail.com and I will do whatever I can to uh, to get it up on screen. The only thing I ask is that you try to get it to, to me by, you know, Saturday or Sunday before the show so I have a chance to work it into the itinerary here. So that would be a good thing. Uh, last week, uh, I also mentioned that we were having a sale on Canoe Hound Adventure swag. That sale is going on till the end of October, and if anybody is interested in picking up some uh, – you know, any anything that uh, will make them look really cool in the backcountry here. We've got all kinds of T-shirts, hoodies, uh, coffee cups, things like that, including our new Let's Take a Dip Tea. Uh, you can find the description or the uh, the link to that in our in the description right below, actually. Uh, down. I got I to gotta get this straight. Down here. You'll see the description of the video. Uh, there is a link there if you want to check it out. And just remember to use the code OCTOBER10. And that will uh, get you 10% off your purchase, uh, no matter how many items. Christmas is coming, don't forget. So uh, you might want to stock up on these things. Uh, quick shout out to uh, to Steve. You know who you are if you're in the chat tonight. Thank you very much. Or if you're watching at a later point, uh, Steve bought me a couple of copies this week. And uh, it's greatly appreciated. If anybody uh, would like to buy a canoe hound, you just help support the channel a little bit. You could do so at buymeacoffee.com forward slash canoe hound. Once again, the link is in the description below. And it's not necessary, but you know what? It's greatly appreciated because uh, I drink a lot more coffee these days than I do beer. So that's, uh, <laughs> I wish I could drink beer all the time. Uh, let's see here. Two more things before we get into tonight's topic. Uh, once again, if you have any hot topics that you'd like to see on the show, or guests that you like to see on the show, which really help me out. They help me steer into the direction that we need to go uh, to have, like, you know, for me to try and find guests and topics. Drop me an email at canoehound at gmail.com. I'll do my best I can to uh, to get uh, guests on the show. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not, but I keep working at it to, uh, to bring you all the best content that we possibly can. And then tonight is an interactive show, just like it always is. But we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, not only do we have after the 8 o'clock uh, break, we will be inviting guests to come on up and ask our panel questions about their uh, their GPS devices. Uh, you know what? Try to save it for then. But if you have a question while our presenters are on screen here, Instead of putting the word question before their question, put the name of the device, okay? So if it's a, if it's a question for Garmin, put Garmin. If it's a question for, uh, for Zolio or, or Spot or whatever device it is, please just put that word in front in capital letters, and that'll help me connect the two together, and we'll try and get them questions up as best we can. So that is that for that and without further ado we will get into tonight's topic because this is one that could probably go on for many hours because uh, we're covering a few devices but we're going to try and keep this crammed into uh, our two-hour window here uh first i want to thank everybody who answered my casting calls uh it would have been nice to have everybody that uh, replied to it uh, be able to come on up and be guests but it's just not possible there's not enough room here on screen we only got room for uh for six comfortably 
And uh, I just wanted to try and keep it at that. But I also appreciate your feedback. Many people actually sent me emails with feedback about their devices, things to bring up, which we will bring up a few of them uh, in the show tonight just to let everybody know. But uh, that is probably about the best thing that we could do. But uh, thanks, everybody, for your outreach. Uh, it's greatly appreciated there. So without further ado, here we go. We're going to introduce our teams. Uh, first member of the, of the panel here we have from... Algonquin and beyond. This is Cody. He's representing Team Garmin in Reach Mini. How are you doing there, Cody? Hi, everyone. Hey, I'm good. How are you doing, Dennis? Thank you for hey, having me. Hey, doing quite well, thanks. Uh, next up on panel, representing Team Bibby Stick, we have Mark LaRiche from the YouTube channel Open Air Outdoors. How are you doing, doing, Dennis? Good. I'm doing well. You? Finally, we get to connect. We tried so many times and we always... Something happened. We couldn't connect, but finally today we get to connect. Great to be here. You know it. You know it. And I gotta tell everybody in the chat. You know what? This guy has the best channel. That's under. <laughs> well, you're right. No, no, you just passed a thousand subscribers. Congrats I did. On I did. I pushed for it this year, and I, I my goal was to get to my a thousand subscriber before the fall. And yep. uh, I reached my goal, and I hit my thousand before the fall. So yeah. Well, I'm bravo. Awesome. I'll, I I'll commend you it. on that. You know what? Uh, I enjoy your content, so keep it coming, man. Uh, next on panel, we got uh, representing uh, Team Zolio. We got uh, John. From... <laughs> I guess this guy doesn't really need an introduction, right? Full time YouTuber now, right? Yeah, for a year and a half. Yeah, somehow. You, yeah, you're living the dream. Living the dream that many have. Many have, yes. <laughs> All righty. Uh, and then uh, where we got here? We got uh, representing Team Spot. We have Own the Dutch Explorer on YouTube. How you doing? Good Gordon? evening, everyone. Good, good. good. Thanks and for then me. last but not least, we have representing Team Sat Phone because I know people out there might be interested in satellite phones as well. We got CW Gets from the Camping Show. How you doing, CW? Hello, gentlemen. How you doing? Hi, Dennis. Well, guys, you know what? Thanks very much for uh, for your outreach. I, I appreciate you all uh, joining panel tonight. And uh, I think uh, we're going to try and keep this uh, the flow going here. And I think uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably go around the panel here and just ask all of you to maybe show your device, tell everybody a little bit about it, why you like your device, uh, why what, what prompted you to buy it, any anything that you think, uh, you know, are benefits and, and perks uh short of getting into all the rates and stuff because we'll try and cover that a little later in the show so we'll start with uh cody over here uh team garmin all right so this is the uh garmin inreach mini and they did recently come out with an inreach mini 2 which is not this one but um i have researched it and looked at the differences so if anything comes up in the questions i can try and address that but um they're very quite similar so yeah i've own this for I think four or five or six years now. I was renting a spot device previously, and then when it was time to purchase, I you know looked at what was out on the market. I hadn't heard of Zolio, I hadn't heard of Bivy. Um, I was looking at Satphone as an option, and between everything, I ended up on the Inreach Mini. I found that it was best suited to my usage, and it had just good reviews, reputation from Garmin and whatnot. So I've been happy with it, using it for five or six years. Um, anyone who knows my channel or just sees the name Algonquin and beyond. I do most of my tripping in Algonquin Park. Um, so I haven't taken this all over North America with me, but it has been all over Algonquin Park plus some other places. And it's been extremely reliable and helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what, what was your main reason? Like, I'm going to ask everybody this because I, I think everybody's probably on the same page when it comes to having one of the, these satellite messaging devices. What was the main reason that you wanted one of these things? So the main reason was I didn't actually want it. My family wanted it. So they were saying, Cody, if you're going solo tripping, you need one of these devices. It was kind of a no compromise type of thing. So I said, sure. Um, yeah, the, sure. I think it comes with solo tripping in general. It's just inherently more dangerous than tripping with groups of people. And it leaves your family back home a little bit more worried. So I do recommend these devices regardless if you're solo or not. But that was pretty much what brought me to getting it is that I primarily solo trip. So it was just a, a safety measure and a means of communicating with uh, family back home. Mm -hmm. Now, you had this device for a while, you said, and uh, it's something that uh, you really rely on. So do you, is it is it safe to say that you're quite happy with your device? Yeah, I'm definitely happy with the purchase. Um, it's 
interesting to see just how the market has changed since I've bought it five or six years ago and the introduction of some of the new competitors. And now I'm sure it will come up a little bit later, but the iPhone introducing the satellite connectivity and stuff like that. But um, yeah. yeah, so far since I've had it, I've, I've been very happy with it. It's as everyone knows, none of these are cheap. Um, but I always say it's one of those things I'd rather have and not need than need and not have. It's like bear spray, which I keep with me and bear spray is obviously a lot cheaper than this, but it's one of those things I'd rather have it and never use it versus need it and not have it. And a little bit later on, if there's time to share some examples and whatnot, I do have one or two stories where um, I can just go a little bit deeper into that. Sure. Kind of thought. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I, mine was out of necessity too. You know, I, I have a Garmin as well, just so everybody knows I'm representing team Garmin's uh, GPS map 66. I, but we'll let all the other guys focus because I have the advantage on this one. Cause I have GPS mapping on it too. Right. But there is connectivity with a lot of the other devices so that you have GPS mapping on your phone. We'll, we'll get over to Mark over here. Uh, Mark is representing Team Bivy Stick. Uh, Mark, what can you tell us about the, the, the Bivy Stick? Uh, something I actually I'd never heard of until I was doing research to do this show. And uh, you were the only person that reached out regarding Team Bivy Stick. What what uh, what floats your boat with the Bivy Stick? Look at the size of this thing. It's like. I love this thing. I've I've had this for two years, and uh, so I got a good good report to say about it after two years of use. And uh, it's just super compact, lightweight. And uh, what I've done is I I got a good quality stainless steel S beaner, clip it to my belt loop or clip it to my pack, and it's always there. And I just love this thing. And uh, they had so many, they have such a wide option for a uh, payment plan or to suit your need. It really is tailored to every individual's needs. And uh, it does everything I needed to do. I mean, from uh, a weather report to uh, checking maps, uh, like topographical maps, because this works through your iPhone or smartphone, I should say, right? You have to download an app on your phone. And uh, with the app, you can open it up and you do a bunch of things, but you can use it standalone as well. So you, you don't have to have your tel your phone to work this thing. It does have, um, it's built with three buttons. You got your power button, you got your check-in button, and you got your, your panic button, right? So at any given time, I can hit that check-in button and that goes out to that phone number that I dedicated that check-in for, which is my wife in my case. And uh, anytime she gets that message comes in, I have a pre-made message. She gets that message, all is good. I'm at my destination. Something like to that effect is what I have my message. And at the same time, she gets my GPS location every time I hit that check-in button. So it's fantastic for her i'm you know what i'm 95 percent of the time a solo paddler i'm in the middle of nowhere and you know as guys we don't care we grab our gear we grab our stuff and we just go right but back home we got wives or we have girlfriends whatever and they worry and this thing just takes it out of them takes that worry right out of there right just sure. you, i'm gonna put you full screen can you hold that device up and just show us yeah, front and back? uh there we go. So I'm, I'm curious myself because, like I said, I've never seen one of these before. Look at the size and, of that uh, thing. It's nice and compact. Yeah. So if I turn it to the side, um, I got three lights. There's uh, the power button. So the top light, the red the one's red right now, that's my satellite strength single light. The one below is a status light. So if I hit my check-in button, that flashes, so that's telling me that sending a, a, a signal to my wife right now saying that I'm okay, because she's in the <laughs> living room. She may not know that I'm okay out here, right? And uh, down below is a uh, power light, so that's uh, three colors, red, green, and uh, yellow to give your, your battery strength. Cool. And it's really that simple, you know, it's great. I, I like the button that says, honey, can you bring me a beer, please? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and of course, the pen. She's button. got her own. She sends it back and says, get your own. So that's, <laughs> that's awesome. All righty. And next, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to John here. And John, uh, you know what? Based on all the stuff that you've said about Zolios in a lot of your videos, I, I almost bought myself a Zolio. And if it weren't for, you know, having the mapping function on this one here uh, and 
and only wanting a, a single device. And I'll get to that when I get my little chance to, to talk this one up. But that's the only reason I probably didn't buy a Zolio. But what 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 do you like about this thing? I, I know you uh, you sing uh, rave reviews about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of people might go for another one for mapping, but you can get maps just through your phone, right? It's similar to Mark's, I imagine. Yep, so you think um, so Apple it, maps are just fantastic. Yeah, and you can download them for, for offline too. So you, you can still get maps on these. Um, first of all, I just want to mention that Zolio does hook us up with free service. So I don't know, it feels greasy not to, to say that. However, I have no contract with them, nothing. There's no money changing hands, so I can, I'm free to say anything. But anyway, I do love it. And um, Cody mentioned that his family was the one who got him to get one. For me, I refused to get one for a long time, especially my mom was on my case and worried about me being out there. But I didn't want to be in contact. Uh, and that was until Aaron had a car crash after uh, we did a Quincy trip, winter camping. And she had a car crash. She flipped her truck on a remote forestry road. Uh, no one came by to get her for three hours. So she was, we weren't living together at the time. So there was a long time between when she was supposed to check in and when she actually did. And I was panicking, like absolutely freaking out. It was probably the worst anxiety I've ever had in my life. So that ultimately made us get a personal locator beacon, which is just an SOS button. And that was a good improvement, but still... Honestly, it was kind of a mistake because this is just so much better. What makes the Zolio different? Um, you get a dedicated phone number and email. Uh, great battery life. That was really important to me. 200 hours. Um, so if you're on a longer trip, that was one of the main things I was looking for when I was shopping for one. Uh, it uses lowest cost network, so it'll go default to Wi-Fi or your cell connection if it picks one up instead of using your credits. Uh, progressive SOS, so you get live updates if you ever do need the SOS button. Uh, yeah, lots of other things. I'm sure we'll get into it, but that's kind of what led me to the Zolio. Cool, cool. And uh, well, obviously, uh, as, as you mentioned there, uh, you really love the device. And uh, what was the other device that you said that you did have? Uh, it's, it's, I don't know if it's made by the same company as Mark's. It says ACR on it. I noticed yours did too, but this is a rescue link PLB. So it's a personal locator beacon. Yeah. It doesn't, you can't message on it. All you can do is put up the antenna and hit SOS. And okay. And they'll come and get you. But uh, you get no communication in the meantime. It's not two ways. It's, yeah. You can't get weather. Weather is huge too. That's, that's one of my biggest reasons for wanting a SATCOM, especially camping more than a third of the year like I, I absolutely need the weather so that that sure is a nice feature eh? i'm sure all devices i think except for the spot offer uh, um offer weather forecasts and stuff oh, like really? that right which I mean, is our segue into cone uh from the dutch explorer youtube channel and he's a team spot x uh i will go on a record to say that my device before this one here was actually the spot gen 3 um which I, I have sold. Um, and the only reason why I did it was because I wanted mapping and I wanted the ability to two-way communicate, right? So, Cole, what can you tell us about the Spot X? Uh, what, Hi, uh, what turned you on to that? Um, yeah, so I have the, oh, right here, the Spot X. Um, I was looking for a device that I could message with. with and uh, last year, I went on my first ever solo trip and I went for a month straight. And um, I was looking for a device that I could just uh, message with, stay in touch with uh, my family. My family's from the Netherlands. Not that in this case that really matters because if one, once I'm out there, I'm out there. But uh, I wanted a way for them to be able to contact me in case anything happens there with a family member or uh, as well as the, the SOS emergency function. And uh, yeah, so, a friend of mine recommended I get a Spot X because he had one, and I just went with that. I honestly didn't do too much research to other devices. Um, I like that this it has its own keyboard, so you don't necessarily need to connect it to a phone. Um, you can connect it to your phone over Bluetooth. Fairly is very easy to set up, um, but I do like that you, you don't need to. You can just message right on here. 
And other than that, like, yeah, like you already said, like the only thing I'm really missing on here is the weather. But I like my emergency contacts. I usually ask, like, if anything scary is coming my way, please give me a heads up. And that kind of overbridges that part. So, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Now, you, you mentioned that it does have Bluetooth connectivity. Uh, my, a good friend of mine, we just come back from a trip up at Naganosh and uh we we try we i don't know if there was something wrong with his phone that wasn't accepting the bluetooth signal or what it was but we couldn't get his uh his spot x connected not to say that there's anything wrong with spot it's just i think he had something going on and this guy is a tech whiz by all means so it's uh it was kind of kind of an oddball thing and then him and i tried playing the game too where we tried messaging each other and we tried to set it up before we went on the trip and he couldn't get my my messages and I couldn't get his. I don't know if there's some sort of uh, no crossover zone there, like you know, like Amazon and Google, the you know, like eighty teller rate. Right? But yeah, for so, mine, I had the same thing with the Bluetooth setup. I couldn't do it while I was out there, but once I'm on Wi-Fi at home, I can set it up. And if I do that before I go on a trip, then it works good on the trip. Okay, but I have yeah, to do so it while I want to set that up before yeah. he goes out, right? Yeah, exactly. As they always say, we you should test your device before yeah. you go out, right? Uh, you true. know, test messaging and stuff like that, um, which is easy if you have unlimited plans. But if you're using up credits just to do tests, kind of, uh, kind of, kind of sucks. But we'll yeah, move yeah. over to the CW yeah, gets yeah. over here from the camping show. Uh, CW is representing Team Satellite Phone, and uh, you know what? I thought we'd throw that into the mix in case anybody out there is maybe considering a sat phone or something like that for uh, for their backcountry adventures. But I, I know absolutely nothing about satellite phones. So, CW, you're the resident uh, expert on this. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a little old school, I guess. I mean, because a lot of people, you know, when they would go venture before the devices like you guys are talking about, uh, there there were none of those. So, really, if you wanted something, um, you, you needed a satellite phone. And, and, of course, that's the school I was from. Um, I will tell you this. when I So, going adventure, I would take a PLB plus a sad phone because I figured, hey, you know, if I have two devices and something happens to one of them, I always have a backup. That's just how I do things. But I will tell you, um, for the family guy who has kids at home, uh, maybe maybe just his wife or whatever, it's, I believe, this is just me, old school again, uh, it's always nicer to hear someone's voice, you know, like a family member, for example, than, than just to get a text message. That's just me. This is all personal opinion here. Um, also, uh, one of the other things is, you know, you can't text a landline, so it'd have to be a, a cell phone. Um, and, and that's kind of been, and it was an issue at one point, but, uh, now everybody's got cell phones. So, you know, um, the, you know, if you have to send some detailed information, if you have something happen, it is quicker for me again, just to personally to call rather than to text. I'm not a great texter. So I kind of suck at that. <laughs> Didn't grow up with it, man. Right? I know. And how this is, the kids do that, I don't know. I have no idea. I'm not that coordinated. Um, and another thing is, just as, again, personal. Um, I have had frostbite several times. Um, and mo most of that happened, actually. Um, I work for the State Highway here, Department of Transportation. And you're out in temperatures that are like sometimes, uh, worse, it was 75 degrees below zero. You get, people get frostbite. And the slightest bit of cold, your fingers go numb, and that, that happens. For me, another problem, texting, like, when my hands are cold, that's just me. I'd rather hit a button and you get, you know, like on your regular phone, bam, and those people are there. A one a storage thing, you hit their button. Um, lastly, if you need someone to talk you through an emergency uh, procedure, be it medical or be it some other thing or whatever, it's always nice to have your hands free. And a phone you can set down and you can you can listen on speaker. And the one I had actually came with a uh, earbud set, a headset. So that was kind of nice. Um, we used, did use that headset once. The thing I like about this, the satellite phones is you still can. I mean, you, you can text just like you do on device there. You also have an SOS button and you can talk. Um, also, it is 911 capable. In the case of my phone, it was one one two instead of nine one one, but um, but you still get the same the same emergency service, and like you guys were talking, um, a, a self or a satellite phone is a standalone device. 
So that's kind of it in a nutshell for their for that that most of it. But they're expensive. Cool. Yeah, that that was the one thing I was going to ask. Is I, I understand they're they're all pretty expensive satellite phones, as are the plans for them as well. Yeah. But we'll, we'll touch a bit on the plans because I, I I think that every device. Uh, obviously requires a plan to be useful when you're in the backcountry for any two-way messaging or anything like that, or even to enable the SOS function or, you know, to, to be able to send out a, a call or a call for help beacon. Um, I, I will interrupt I, you. The, the SOS yep. is free. You don't have to have a plan for that. That will work all the time. That is the only thing that does not require. On the, on the sat phone? Sat phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's like that. Is anybody with any of the other devices? It, it, you have to have the package it, for it to be functioning. It did. Right? It did. I, I don't know about it anymore, but that's been a year yeah. ago that I got rid of mine. You're saying if you don't have membership, you can't use a SOS? Yes. Is that, is yeah. that correct? As far as I know, except with the PLB, which doesn't have a, a membership at all. Okay. A subscription. Cool. Cool. Okay, I'm just going to give everybody a little bit of a blurb on uh, the Garmin 66i, uh, GPS map 66i. The reason why I picked this up, um, you know what, 58 years old now. Uh, you know what, uh, doctor recently put me on cholesterol pills. So he says uh, either take these or, you know what, maybe possibly suffer a heart attack. And that kind of scares the crap out of a guy uh, in my age range or any person for that matter. So it was one of these things that out of necessity I figured and, and out of uh, just like um, Cody was saying out of respect for my family so that they know that I'm safe. Uh, my daughter's grown up, they're out of the house. Uh, my wife is at home alone when I'm uh, basically out in the back country. And I just figured, you know what, I need something to communicate back and forth before this device here. I actually had the uh, spot gen three, and I found that it just, uh, you know, there are three typical messages that you get. Uh, preset messages weren't enough to cover what I wanted to convey in messages. Uh, you know, at the time before I got this, my daughter was pregnant. Uh, she was actually uh, getting close to having the baby. And I figured my wife could let me know if she had the baby, if I became a grandpa again while I was out in the backcountry. These type of things are, are really, really neat to, uh, to have. Um, with this particular device and the reason why I didn't go with the mini because I was contemplating the mini and I was also contemplating the Zolio. Um, I didn't like the, usually when I go on a trip, the cell phone goes off and it goes into my dry bag and it stays in there uh, unless I need it for any other purpose. I didn't like the idea of having to carry two devices in order to get the functionality I wanted, like mapping and stuff like that. So that's the reason why I went with a unit like this. This unit also has the ability to, to text out and in, right? But built into it, it's got just a, a keyboard and you got to click left and right, uh, up and down to, to get to the letters. And, you know, to, to send a message, it could take a while. So, you know, if I was in motion during the day, I would just do it that way if I had to send a message. But if I am at, at base camp or camp, I can turn on my phone and I can connect it to the device and I can send a text in like seconds. So that's the reason why I went with this here. Uh, also loaded it too, as far as maps are concerned, uh, back, uh, the back roads map books have a fantastic mapping system for, uh, for the Garmin products. And it gives you, you know, the details on it are, are pretty amazing. They show you crown land reserves. They show you rivers, canoe routes, uh, snowmobile trails, hiking trails, all, all that kind of thing on the Ontario version of the map that I got. But it comes at a cost, too, of like $170, I believe, just for the maps. But that's neither here nor there. I got it now, and that's cool. So that's what steered me towards this device rather than the InReach or the Zolio. Uh, spot, I, I had the spot and I kind of left spot for a reason and we'll talk about uh, that reason in a little bit. But with that being said, we'll, we'll kind of move on to the next thing. Um, pros and cons. Cody, do you have any pros and cons that uh, you, you really find with the InReach Mini? Things that, that kind of, you know, Irk you a bit? Uh, wish they did it a little different. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, the the biggest pro is obviously the size. Um, like you were saying, you put your phone away and kind of store it away for the trip. I'm the opposite. I always have my phone in my pocket, whether it's for pictures or in the tent. I like to have music playing at a low volume, stuff like that. So for me, the purchase of 
a device that I knew I'd get the best use of it by pairing it with my phone, that was like not a factor for me. That was actually kind of beneficial because I knew I'd have my phone anyways. And with all my filming and whatnot, I have tons of extra power banks and batteries. Um, so giving extra juice to any of them as well, like because the pairing will use a little bit more battery, not a concern. So I, I definitely like the size factor. That's the biggest appeal of it. It's I think like two by four inches in 100 grams. So it's very, very low profile. Um, I like how easy it is to send a preset message. So um, as someone mentioned before, uh, just like Spot, you get three presets, which you can send unlimited times for free. It doesn't count towards the credit based on the plan that you have. And then if you want to send a custom message, that's separate. But the preset, like 99% of my use with this is sending one preset message, which is I'm alive and okay. So I have that as my first preset, which I send. Usually I do in the morning when I wake up, at night before I go to bed, and in the afternoon whenever I arrive at my destination for that day. Or if it's a rest day, then just at some point in the afternoon. But the ease of sending that preset is very easy. You turn it on with one button, and then you basically just press this button. It's three or four buttons that takes less than 10 seconds to do, and then the preset is searching for a signal to send. So the ease of sending that initial preset without pairing with the phone or anything just on the device, that's a huge selling point for me. Um, and then the other side of your question, what irks me about it? Um, I find it funny that no matter where I am, I could be paddling in the middle of a huge lake. I could be at a campsite with no tree coverage. People will always say, poor GPS signal. Do you want to try and send the message anyways or wait until it's better? Not verbatim those words, but basically that. And doesn't matter where I am, it'll always give me that warning. So I always just have to say, yes, try and send it anyways. And obviously it depends on where the satellite is in terms of it might send in five seconds, it might send in 30 seconds when a satellite's passing over. They've always sent for me, but it will still always give me that warning. So I kind of find that kind of funny. Um, otherwise, I don't really have too many things that irk me about it. The, the weather forecast, I think, is reliable and accurate the vast majority of the time. Um, but sometimes it's off. There is one example where I was in Algonquin in the middle of, in a, of a white trout lake. If you guys are familiar with that, it's in the park. It's relatively in the center of the park. And there was a huge windstorm. It was probably 50 to 60 kilometers an hour. Um, and I pulled the weather and it said like chance of a like light breeze or something like that. So I was kind of laughing reading that weather report thinking if this is a light breeze. So it's not always accurate, but I do pull the weather very frequently and the majority of the time it's pretty good. So they believe, I, I believe they get the weather from, I think it's called Dark Sky, which is where the weather is coming from. Um, and I'm not sure about the other devices, if it's the same or from a different source. But um, so to be honest, those are the only things that really irk me about this. And neither of them are really huge factors in the day-to-day -day use of it. Um, everything else about it is pretty seamless, like the connectivity with, oh, sorry, there is one more thing. Um, the connectivity with the app, like all that is great. The one more thing is, um, they make their products very confusing in the sense that they have such a wide range of products and a wide range of desktop and mobile apps. So in order to update your preset messages and add contacts, you do that on your online profile. In order to make sure you're up to date on the latest firmware, that's with one desktop app. But then you also need to sync it, the updates that you've done online to the device through a separate desktop app. So I pretty much have three places that I need to go just when I'm getting it set up for the season before I even connect it to my phone. And then on the phone, they have Earthmate, which is for this. And then they have, or I might be getting it confused. And then they have Explorer, which is for their other products. So they have multiple phone apps as well. So they are kind of all over the place in that regard. It takes a bit of a learning curve. Once you figure it out, then it's pretty easy. It's okay, and you do this, then this, then this, I'm done. But the initial time, it took me a little bit. And I actually had to call them once or twice saying, how come the sync isn't working? And they say, oh, you actually need a separate desktop app to do the sync. Or, so um, yeah. that was kind of not the most intuitive to start. You, you see me shaking my head and laughing because I, I found the same thing with the Garmin is you had to jump through hoops to try and figure out exactly how to do things. Once you're uh, out still, of the field. struggle with the Explore maps uh, in, in the map loader, yeah. right? So, yeah. But once you're out in the field, it's been seamless. And that's really when yeah. it matters most. When you're in the comfort of your home, if you're struggling with the desktop app, that's not that big of a deal. Um, once I'm actually out and using it, I have, I've never had any issues whatsoever. 
and they do have great support because I did have to call them on yeah. one thing and I had no problem. Yeah. I got through and they were like, they had me fixed up in no time. They, they know the thing, right? So, yeah. So how about you, Mark? Uh, what, what are some of your pet peeves uh, or, or do you have any pet peeves with the... Uh, um, maybe you know what? Yeah, I do have a pet peeve. Um, the only one is uh, this device, because it's so small, it also has a small battery, right? And uh, so this here will, will have a life of, uh, you know, if you leave it on all the time, 24-7, by the end of the third day, my battery light will be red, and that's 20% or less power. That's my only pet peeve about this. But at the same token, we always bring power banks with us when we go out in the backcountry. And this here takes a um, USB-C cord, right? And uh, it's a much faster charge rate. So in a couple of hours, it's recharged and you're good for another three days. That's got to be my pet peeve about this unit, which you know, makes sense to reason considering the size of it. Other than that, I love absolutely everything about it. Um, I'm not a big techie guy, and this thing is easy to use. And if um, if I'm going to use it with my phone, I'm going to pull it up. There's my home page, and it's super easy to navigate. It tells me what I got going. Yeah, you can see the SOS button there. I can go into the settings, go into maps, and uh, check my GPS location. And check my topo maps. I can uh, be interactive with uh, other people. If you have uh, friends that have a bivy stick, you can connect with them. You can track them. You can let people back home track you if you wish, right? I can hit that check-in button. If I push and hold that check-in button, I can have uh, my wife can track me where I am and where I'm going every 10 minutes, it'll send a new GPS location to her phone and she can open up the app. Like she can go on the website and she can watch me travel through the back country. Like it's just packed full of pretty cool stuff for such a small unit. I just love it. But that comes at a cost as a nod of credits. Uh, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up because uh, this unit. They're all the same thing. Well, no, I, I beg to differ. This, okay. <laughs> this is the only unit that I could find that has no activation fees, no annual fees, and you can deactivate this anytime you want, and there's no fee for that either. You buy it, you pick the plan that works for you, and you use it. That's it. Mm -hmm. And actually, uh, just um, to share your location, um, some devices, I believe, and John, you can jump in, but I believe... Zolio is one of them. You have to pay a separate monthly subscription just to share your location. And this thing, you don't. You want to share your location, you share your location. It's, it's, it's in there and it offers it. And that was a big selling feature for me. The fact that not only can I send that message, but that people know where I am. I can share my location. I mean, that's what satellite communication is all about, right? Number one, I'm okay. Number two, here I am, right? So I, I didn't like the idea that some of these devices has a separate membership fee, monthly payment, just to share that location. So yeah, yeah I love, absolutely love I, this. I find it, I'll put up a, a comparison sheet here once we get uh, around this uh, this circle here. But uh, I, I, I do believe when I was doing my research that Bivy Stick did seem to be one of the most cost-effective units out there. But uh, you know, it, it, they, they all they all managed to nickel and dime you one way or another. Yeah. <laughs> I got to tell you, I got to tell you, the upfront cost is more. Like upfront, when you buy it, this thing is more expensive than some other units. But quick yeah. math over a long period of time, this thing is much more affordable. Well, let me let me just put this up here really quick. Then here, here's a little comparison chart. All the numbers might not be a hundred percent accurate because this here was, uh, I believe, uh, done in 2021. But if you look at the retail price in, in Reach Mini, three forty nine, the Zolio around one hundred ninety nine, uh, Bivy Stick Blue, which is the unit you've got, Mark. Yeah, that's that's yeah, what I got. Three forty nine, Spot X two forty nine, and somewhere so we're like, like a representative for somewhere, so we'll we'll leave them out of the uh, the running here. Yeah, but Bivy Stick, you're right, had no activation fee. They were the only one of uh, of all of them that had no activation fees here. 
right there. Yeah. Uh, and all the rest are pretty close to the same, uh, you know, that $20 range. And but plan prices, right? So like the InReach Mini starting at around eleven ninety five. Now they have multiple packages, which I could pull that up here as well in a bit to show you what their package prices are currently. Because I went on to each website to get their current package prices. So these numbers might not reflect uh, completely accurate. I think this is up to fourteen ninety nine for uh, the lowest one for the InReach. That's actually uh, a U.S. pricing, Dennis. It's a it starts at nineteen ninety nine for Canadian Freedom Plan. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. looking at the annual plan, it might be the annual, yeah. that, but for the freedom, which presumably most people in Canada want the freedom plan so that they can pause in the months that they're not camping, it's uh, it's the basis 20 bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. And then you mentioned earlier too, Cody, about uh, about the weather forecasts. And yeah. it's interesting, they all come from Dark Sky, yeah, right, with the exception of Spot, who doesn't carry the uh, the mess or the for weather forecasts. So, yeah. I do miss that on the spot, for sure. Yeah. It is nice. I've used it a couple times on my Garmin, and it uh, I find it to be uh, quite handy, that's for sure. Um, the other thing is uh, the size of the, these particular units. Uh, the Spot X even comes in as one of the heaviest. Uh, the Bivy Stick is like the lightest. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. And then uh, the networks. This is a big one too, right? Uh, is the networks? I, I find it quite interesting that all all the devices except for Spot use the Iridium uh, global satellite network, right? And what that what that is is it, it's got global coverage, whereas the Spot X has the Globe Star. And I was mentioning we were on our canoe trip there a couple weeks ago, and my buddy and I both sent a message at the same time. Mine went through in about a minute, and his Spot X seemed to take about like five six seven minutes for the, the the thing to upload now i don't know if he just didn't didn't have that satellite right there or whatever but uh i, I did notice that there was a bit of a difference there has anybody else noticed a difference with theirs uh, as far as timing my my messages on my spot x usually take fairly long to send as well as receive and yeah that five minutes that sounds very familiar and i, I would say the five minutes is probably an average even Sometimes, sometimes it'll, it'll be a little bit faster when you find like a sweet spot somewhere. You probably hook into a satellite and it, it works a lot better. But overall, I say the five minutes is very, very average. And I think that all has to do with the amount of satellites. I believe there's uh, the Iridium only has like 40 satellites or something like that to cover globally. Or so not uh, the Globestar. Yeah. Has about Globestar, 40 satellites. Globestar has 48 satellites. 48? Okay. Yes. And how, how many do you know how many the Iridium does? Um, I do not have that. Um, yes, I will, I will tell you, Globestar is is uh, a better uh, satellite network than is Iridium. So I know one of the differences between the Mini and the Mini Two is that they introduced like GPS versus GSNN, which GSNN introduces a bunch more um, satellites into the mix. So I believe when I was looking at it, GPS is something like thirty to forty satellites, and with GSNN, with I think it's like three or four other. Um, groups of satellites that each have like 30 or 40 so it brings it up to a total of like over 100 i think so um, i don't know how it compares the the globe option um globe star but i know gps like the in reach mini is about 35 to 40 i believe and then with the mini 2 it brings it up a lot higher than that so they they're claiming that it would improve you know satellite connectivity and response time mm -hmm. Uh, the, the one thing that I found interesting with this, too, is they, th this particular chart had just uh, some of the minuses or pluses and minuses. They, they're saying for the in-reach, a plus is that's small and light. The minus is expensive. Uh, Zolio, most affordable, but could be smaller and lighter. Uh, for the Bivy stick, claims to be the lightest device. Uh, relies on cell phone cover on your cell phone to work. Uh, you guys can tell me if these are accurate or not because I don't know. Spot X keyboard texting on device, which I think is is genius. I, I wish mine had that. Uh, the downfall is it's heavy. Uh, and then, uh, well, we won't worry about some work because we're not representing. But are those claims, do they seem pretty accurate? Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. thing I was going to mention when you were talking about pricing was um, it was a few years ago, so it might be different now, but I had done – a comparison between the inReach and the Zolio, actually. Um, and I just made a spreadsheet and used some different examples of pausing for this many months, keeping it active for this many months, all the different fees. Because like you said, they nickel and dime you where they can. And it's very confusing when you're trying to compare because there's 
activation, there's annual, there's pause of subscription, there's monthly, there's the upfront cost. So I pretty much put into all one big spreadsheet just for the inReach and Zolio. And what I found based on the example I did was very interesting was that five years was where they converged to the exact same, like to the dollar um, price. And I think it was everything beyond five years, the inReach became cheaper because that's where the upfront cost started to get offset by the free pausing the subscription. And the Zolio was cheaper in the first five years. So I can share it after and you guys can take a look and see if it's still relevant, the pricing model. But um, I was just curious. So I did that a few years ago and I thought it was very, very interesting to see that in five years was like the exact converging point for the two uh, devices. And obviously it depends on how many months. Like I know, John, you're out in a, like camping a lot more than I would be. I, I think I use it for four to five months of the season. Um, so obviously that's a factor, but yeah, it was pretty interesting to see. Yeah, that's interesting. And similar to what Dennis said, I feel like eventually, no matter what, you end up paying something pretty similar. I think a lot of us, if we're just getting into this, we're thinking about it like paying for a second cell phone. And we're people are understandably reluctant to do that. But so, so we're looking for a deal and we're looking for the best price. But I don't think you're going to save a bundle going with one or the other. Like I think the, the Zolio is quite affordable relatively relative to the others, but still like, I, I think it's close and it depends on your usage scenario. Like Mark was saying how I think your check-ins are free, right? With yeah. as long as you have the basic plan, you can check in for free. Yep. That's right. Whereas yeah. with Zolio it's seven, seven dollars and fifty dollars a month, seven dollars and fifty cents a month to add on unlimited check-ins and location sharing. So I don't know, their base price might be higher, but then you pay for that. So it's a, it seems to be a give and take no matter who you go with. Um, and it depends on your, your usage scenario. But uh, the unlimited plan for Zolio is 70 bucks a month. I don't know what it costs for everyone else. Like I, for, in my usage scenario, I need unlimited. I believe the unlimited plan for Bivy Stick is uh, $60 for an unlimited plan. I'm going to see if I can pull it up. Here's a, here's a Zolio plan breakdown here. Yeah. So the basic is 25 gets you uh, 25 satellite messages in touch, 250 messages for 45 bucks a month and then $70 a month for the unlimited. Uh, if so John, my yeah. thing, I would, I would rather, in my case, I would rather buy the basic, which is what I've done with my, my device. I buy the basic and I'll pay for the extras based on the amount I'm using it. But you have to put yourself into the package that you feel is going to be the best representation for what you're doing. So you're not overspending. You're, you want to maximize, right? So, yeah. John, none of the messages are unlimited sends. Like, I believe Spot is the same as inReach, where you get a few presets which can be unlimited. So that's not the case with any of the plans. Like, if you want unlimited anything, you have to go to the unlimited plan. Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, um, that you can use the check-in button with the Location Share Plus. So mm -hmm. the cheapest way you could get unlimited with that would be go with the base plan, 25 a month, and then the 750 location share plus feature. So then you're at 3250 a month and you get 25 messages plus check -in, check in and location sharing, like a breadcrumb trail for someone yeah. to look at your map at home. Mm -hmm. To the best of my knowledge, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so cool. I'm showing uh, for the Bivy Stick, if you uh, sign up for a one-year contract, you can get unlimited for uh, forty five dollars a month, but you got to remember this: this is in American dollars, right? Okay. When you yeah. uh, see these numbers, this is what I've got for the Bibby Stick. Uh, this, like I said, I pulled this from their website yesterday, and this is uh, their their Canadian website. So fourteen ninety nine is their basic. The one thing I, I really thought was interesting with the Bibby too is if you buy your credits, they roll over. I don't think yeah. any of the other plans offer that where their 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 credits roll over, do they? Yeah, Anybody? if you don't use up all your credits, whatever unused credits will go to the next month. They stack. And uh, so, for example, what I had done last winter, instead of deactivating my Bivy stick, because I'm not really all that active in the wintertime. I don't do a lot of moving around, right? And uh, I have the option of turning it off and uh, returning it back on whenever I need it. And I opted to just leave it running and I collected my points throughout the winter. And then by the time May came around and I hit the back country, I had like 171 credits or something like that. I could, uh, you know, my wife could keep me on here all, all night long kind of thing and not worry about it, right? 
I had plenty of credits. Yeah, that's, and that's I'd like to also mention that uh, this is a question I've been asked. If you run out of credits, does your thing stop working? And no, it doesn't. So, like, I keep the basic plan. It works for me. I'm not a big talker to text, whatever. So it works out for me on the basic plan of 20 credits. But if I go over my 20 credits, uh, the company has all your billing information. They're billing you every month. So if you go beyond your credits, every time you send out a message, they bill you 50 cents on your credit card. So it's not like you use up your credits and then now you're you're done until next month. It doesn't work that way. You can continue using it completely. That, that's how it is with the Garmin as well. They, uh, If you go over your credits, which I have a couple times, which I don't mind because you know, I'm, I'm paying 75 cents a pop or whatever. And I, I'm willing to do that because I I'm, I bought into the cheaper plan, right? Yeah. John, I, I wanted to ask you now, we, we, we didn't get finished getting around on that about, uh, do, do you have any pet peeves with uh, the, the Zolio at all? I know you're, you're kind of, you, you're really partial to them and you have, I guess, maybe a little sponsorship by them, <laughs> but uh, things that they can improve on perhaps? No, it's okay. I'm free to speak my mind. Um, Good shit, okay. <laughs> no, uh, so one thing that some people complain about is that it's micro USB instead of USB-C. I really don't care about that, um, but I don't know. Some people, if you read reviews, you might get someone really fixated on that. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, and this isn't unique to Zolio, but um, I guess the baby stick, uh, at least the baby stick, and some of the other ones like the somewhere, you have to pair them with your phone to do other things besides check-in, right? Like on the InReach Mini, you have a, a you can use the, the arrows to type, right? It's tedious, but you can, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it seems awful, but if you had to, you have that option then. And obviously in the SpotX and, and the SAP phone, that's that's not a factor. But um, on my trip with Xander last fall to St. Raph, uh, my cell phone had a crack in the screen. And it's a waterproof cell phone. I didn't think about this, but it was raining and it got moist. I didn't hold it out in the rain. I had it like under my hat. Uh, the water seeped into the crack on the screen and fried the phone. So I could not communicate with the phone. I could still send check-ins to Aaron, but thankfully I was with Xander and he could tell her what was going on because my real fear about having one of these, any, any device like this is if you lose it, suddenly you're not checking in and the person who is at home expecting your check-in is is going to panic like if i drop it in the lake i'm i'm really scared about that so cw i think you mentioned you carry two and that's that's not a bad idea at all um yeah or I mean, or travel with somebody that has a device too yeah like you said, you're traveling with xander and xander had a device and that kind of bailed you out uh, when when you couldn't right so yeah because it's an awful feeling if you're yeah. knowing that they're panicking at home and you cannot get to any way to communicate them i haven't had that and like i said i can still use the check-in but yeah if, if i dropped in the lake then i don't know what i would do we, we had to give me a 48 hour earlier. list Sorry, yeah, we have to ask a question about that earlier. I seen going through the chat uh, whether uh, anybody's significant others out there really get upset if you don't check in on time. Has anybody here on panel had anybody like really freak out because maybe you know you forgot to send a I'm doing great message because you're enjoying yourself by the campfire or something like that? I had that at the bar once, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> go figure, see, I, and I am single now. So there you go. <laughs> I did have that the first time that I rented a spot device, um, but it yeah. wasn't that I didn't check in. It was that at the time I had my parents on it, um, and it comes from like a no reply email. At the again, this was seven eight years ago, um, and my father didn't check his email until he was back at the office on Monday. My mom just ignored the email because she saw it was a no reply, didn't even open it. So the whole weekend they were worried about me. It was just a weekend getaway. Um, and they thought that I wasn't checking in and they were panicking. They were nervous. Then come Monday when my father went to work, he said, he's been sending us the things like five times a day. Just they didn't check. So it was less about me not checking in. It was about them just not being tech savvy enough to you know to open the email. But um, yeah, it always is a concern. Like John said, that if you don't send it, the expectation when you have the device is you're going to be sending it. So what happens if you don't? So I do go out of my way every trip to remind whoever is on the check-in list that there's a million reasons why you might not get a message. Like John said, it can be dropped in the lake. 
the device could, for whatever reason, glitch or break. Be, who knows? I say start to panic if I don't arrive when I'm supposed to arrive. But if there's a day or so that you don't get messages, it could be for who knows what reason. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting question, Riley. I wasn't avoiding this question. I seen you had posted it earlier, and I was going to try and get to it in a little while there. But I'll ask it now. Do any of these devices have designated phone numbers so that you yeah. don't have to text yeah. someone first for them to reach you? Yeah. My, the the uh, Bivy stick has a designated number. And if I deactivate it and then three months later I decide to use it again, it'll get a new designated number. Okay. And I believe the spot does that. They have a designated phone number, right? The spot has a designated number, and I believe that's connected to my account. So whenever I uh, deactivate or activate that again, it'll be the same number every time. Even I think even if I go to a different device, but I use my same account, I keep the same number, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And as now, far as messages yeah. coming in for that question, uh, Riley's asking, um, I have um, my check-in uh, light, when I hit my check-in button and it goes out, if that light starts to blink um, green, it means there's somebody sending me a message. So then it's up to me to decide if I want to open up my phone and read the message or ignore it, whatever. So if somebody wants to talk to me, they can't. I am alerted that somebody is sending me something. And, uh, but now, Mark, uh, with that, with that being said, do you have to do you have to put uh, your contacts within the into your yeah. database for yeah. that so, phone call or to come through? Yeah, I can only communicate with people that are in my contact list. Right. So I when I when I activate the BV stick, it will ask permission to access your contact list so you do have to have you can only speak to people that are on your phone now i'm gonna put a con uh, this I, I believe this must be your wife that is my wife <laughs> yeah so vicky's saying she doesn't get upset uh, she always she knows he always checks in when he can his phone may die on him but his check still works uh i might panic if i don't hear from mark for a few days and you're pretty savvy in the back country there, Mark. So, yeah, yeah. Whatever, but you know, if I what weren't it, there, I'd be afraid. Well, <laughs> if she wouldn't worry, she wouldn't be a good wife, right? Yeah. Uh, Dennis, I didn't want to add just eight was... o'clock in our eight o'clock break, and I know CW has another oh. commitment that he has to attend to at about break time. So, CW, I'm going to ask you, what can you tell us a little bit more about a sat phone? Yeah, uh, pet peeves, things like that. First of all, I want to say Camper 69, no one will miss me either way. I love that guy. That's I can I can echo that as well. So it's <laughs> when you're single, that's what you do. I, I get a couple things I can read here if that if you don't if you're okay with that. Um, first of all, the, the people are talking about Globalcom. Uh Globalcom is the leader in satellite phone services with over 20 years of experience. Blah, blah, blah. They have 48 Leo satellites with an additional four satellites in orbit as spares so that's a that's a pretty that's something that i pay attention to when i research things what kind of system are you on how reliable is the system and you guys were talking about your devices and there were two different uh systems or networks that i heard you mention but global star is supposed to be the top dog so to speak so even apple uh here is going to um they're going to be a part of the yeah, yeah, right. Apple, right. Apple, Apple's going to be a game changer when it comes to satellite communication they, too. Right? Yeah, in fact, it says here it appears that the partnership between Global Star and Apple for satellite-based communications is now a reality. With the service launch planned for four or Q4 rather this year, Global Star's revenues for 2023 should rise as it sells its cash sells to its cash-rich partner. Uh, so they're yeah they're going to be uh, they're going to be buddies. Um, how much does it cost per minute to talk on a satellite phone? Depending on your provider, voice calls range from 15 cents to $2 a minute. Um, so it, it can be very expensive depending on how much you use it. We, I, I sent you a couple of pictures, but I will just read you this here on a standard plan. The lowest, uh, and I think this is from the sat phone store in Miami, Florida, which is where I purchased my phone and, and my, uh, plan was voice 20, 20 minutes. Um, it's a 12 month plan. If you, you have 20 minutes with, with which to use, uh, 49.99 a month. And that's a 12 month commitment. Um, you get free incoming voice calls. You let's see. Um, iridium to iridium. If you took call another satellite phone, it's 69 cents a minute outbound text messages, 15 cents 
per message. Incoming text messages free. So that is a standard plan. What I would do, my plan was a prepaid plan. And I took it, it was a six month plan. It was $4.99. Now that's expensive. So I had six months. I had uh, 200 minutes that I could use in that six months. Um, and then the, the minutes carried forward. I never had that plan. That was, uh, this is since I don't have my phone anymore. This is a, a new thing they have. That just worked best for me. Cause I was, I was traveling for, you know, adventuring for six months and that was it. And that worked out for me. I had it if I needed. Can you call 911 rather from a satellite phone? Yes. Uh, Globestar phones, 911. Iridium phones, you dial 112. What is the most secure satellite phone? This is the Cadillac. If you want one that is, and I'll read the specs on them here a little bit, but it's the Iridium 9575 Extreme. Those phones run about an average of $1,500. You can... They say they give you a range here, thousand seventy five to sixteen ninety five. I paid about fifteen hundred dollars for my phone. Um, will satellite phones work if the grid goes down? Um, because sat phones gain connection from satellites not connected with the ground, they'll continue to receive service even if civilization as we know it begins crumbling around us. And we were talking about a little bit about that before the show. But um, some some countries satellite phones are illegal. Um, I don't know if you guys knew that or not. I don't know about your devices, but their signals will usually bypass local tele telecom systems, hindering censorship and wiretapping attempts, which has led some intelligence agencies to believe that satellite phones aid terrorist activity. Did not know that until I researched that here a little bit ago. Um, best satellite phones in 2022, Iridium uh, 9575 Extreme. It's the best satellite phone for rough environments. Um, real quickly, my last thing is here. Um, the iPhone, I'm going to just mention this, the iPhone 14 uh, and iPhone, iPhone 14 Pro series, because some people may be wondering about this. It just came out. Um, they've just been announced. They have a limited capability to make SOS calls via the satellite network. Uh, imagine that, you know, Apple and, and uh, Global Star here, uh, partners. When you're not able to access normal phone coverage, um, however, because the new phones don't feature the kind of bulky antennas you get on a normal sat phone, you need to point them directly at the satellite using a special orientation app. Uh, so it requires another app. Plus, the bandwidth is so low that you can only send text messages, and even that is likely to be a challenge. For this reason, Apple has devised an interface for emergency services with a series of prepaid prompts such as who needs help, is anyone injured, what type of emergency, emergency is it, and even then it may take a message, uh, take a message minutes to send. Uh, also note that the service will only be made available in the U.S. and Canada to begin with and not north of the 62 degree latitude. A um, little bit lastly about this phone that I was talking about, the Iridium Extreme 9575. This thing is... Um, Super rugged, has SOS button, location tracking, um, fully certified durability standard compliance for water jet and dust protection, meeting military standards 810F. That's pretty tough stuff. Um, that combined with the 99% global coverage makes this the best satellite phone for travelers heading into rough environments or off the beaten track. The integrated tracking can also help with business operation or automatically reassuring relatives and uh <clears throat> excuse me um supports online tracking and google google mapping services i think you guys mentioned something about that uh programmable uh it's the small, smallest iridium phone ever rugged high gain antenna waterproof shock proof dust proof uh, so that's pretty much it in, in a nutshell there there well, it's, it, it is the phone yeah, a, a totally a, a totally different beast compared to all these uh these just regular well regular gps satellite uh messaging devices when it comes to satellite phoning yeah well yeah incredible. it's all what's your your favorite i mean what you know what school are you from and that's that's really what it boils down because these guys you guys talking about these devices they're great they're affordable and they do work and there is that's a big deal you know mm -hmm. that's it'll cool. be interesting to see with these new phones coming out, these satellite capability phones, it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen in the next couple of years. Um, I'm I'm guessing there's going to be some kind of glitch and nothing works perfect right, right. out of the gate. 
So uh, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't rush to buy these new iPhones that have satellite capabilities once they come out. I veer away from it for at least a year just to make sure there's not any bugs that's gonna yeah. come out of that. I mean the sat the sat phone thing is honestly it it's all that in a bag of chips, but it's expensive, and that's the only that's really the only downfall that I, I have with it. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to take a quick uh, little break here. Um, great opportunity. You're going to be about two minutes uh, to refresh your drinks or get rid of a drink. And anybody in the chat there, I just posted the link in there if anybody wants to pop up on panel and ask a question, because I'd imagine we're going to get quite a few people coming up here to ask questions about these, uh, these devices. So uh, if everybody just uh, sit tight for a moment, and we will be back right after this little commercial break. If I could find the button to push. <laughs> Here we go. For over 50 years, we've been connecting people with nature by building classic Canadian canoe designs using the best materials available. We built a reputation on durable, dependable canoes that allow you to focus on what's important, whether that's unplugging in remote wilderness, spending quality time with your favorite people, or nailing the perfect line. Visit novacraft.com to find the perfect canoe for you and locate your nearest authorized dealer. Tonight's episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show is brought to you by OTG Meals. Fresh, freeze-dried, small-batch meals made for people on the go. Algonquin Outfitters, with four key locations in and around Algonquin Park to serve your backcountry needs. Kid Products, stick stoves and reflector ovens proudly made in Canada. And Novacraft Canoes, connecting you with nature in Canadian-made canoes since 1970. How they feel about the satellites, so I'm like, all right, I'll answer, I'm watching. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure all the other wives are watching. But Welcome watching. back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just turn off everybody's microphones here for a second. <laughs> uh, I have to ask, were, were, my, were my commercials working okay? Yeah. My, my internet's been glitching out here and I've been yeah. having some problems. So, but anyways, we're back. Hey, I just want to say thanks everybody. Thank you, Dennis, for the invite. I got to run. It was nice meeting all of you gentlemen and have a wonderful rest of the, your evening and show. And thanks for, thanks for uh, having me on. Excellent. CW. Thanks, thanks CW. for sharing what you know about satellites there. And uh, we'll be in touch soon. That sounds great. Thank you guys. Thanks man. Have a good day. All righty. So we do have a few people in the basement here uh, ready to ask questions or have comments or what have you. Uh, we'll bring, uh, we'll start out with uh, Darren from Ride Paddle Repeat. How you doing tonight, Darren? Hey, guys. Hey, Darren. Got a question for the boys? Yeah, doing well. Maybe more of a philosophical kind of question, not so related to the, to the gear, but... In my last experience I had with, uh, I use the InReach SE Plus, and I have the same kind of plan, like the, the minimal plan, $20 a month. And I'm one of those people that checks in, I guess, a bit more frequently. And I kind of got used to just replying to the text because it was a longer trip. It was the first time my wife and I were away for, I guess, such a long period. And didn't realize on the back end, but of course, when I got the next bill, you know, they charge you for additional messages. So I guess the kind of philosophical question is, is now that we have the ability to do the messaging, do you find that that kind of, um, you know, changes the dynamic of your trip? Do you prefer just to have like a SOS beacon so you don't have to have the messages, but you can have the emergency call? Or do you take advantage of the messages? Do you find that that maybe might distract you or give you maybe a bit more peace of mind? Do we have anybody that wants to take that question? It did change things for me a little bit. Um, you know, always solo out there in the middle of nowhere, and I'm okay with that. I really am. But uh, And I, I felt kind of weird 
that now I could be reached anywhere in the world. <laughs> it's like I can't hide anymore, so to speak. But pretty quickly, it you know the benefits outweigh it. It really is about giving people a peace of mind, and uh, you know, that outweighs everything. Yeah. You know, you know what I, I I look at it this way. There's people out there that say, you know what, uh, oh, technology, leave it at home. I go to get away from it. Ultimately, man, it, it's it's our safety that's uh, yeah. you know that that we're considering here. You know, uh, you get yourself in a jam, and there's nobody there, especially those of us that are are you know solo paddlers at times or or whatever it might be. Heck, it could be an, an, an instance where you're out on your boat, uh, you know, out in the middle of Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and you're out there fishing. That thing should be coming with you out there too. Uh, you know, you, you get uh, hit by a rogue wave, you get flipped over and you have no way of communicating, then you're kind of screwed out there. Right. So I, I think to me, it, it doesn't hinder my, uh, it doesn't hinder my, my tripping ability. Any, if anything, for me, it's an aid. You know what I mean? Uh, you're, you're a little disoriented at where you are on your map. You know, you can call up here on your cell phone or on the device itself and you could pinpoint exactly where you are in, in like 99.9% .9 of the cases. To me, it's a benefit, not a hindrance in the backcountry. Anybody else? Yeah, absolutely. Because sometimes, you know, we're, we always think canoeing, but like for me, sometimes I'll go out and I'm driving and I'm driving logging roads to the end of those roads because I'm scouting and I'm just, or I'm hunting or something. And you know what? This thing, um, it actually pretty cool with the, it, it, it comes with a clip, uh, GoPro clip. And it has a quarter inch thread on the back and I put that together and I got a sticky on my dash and I clipped this on the dash of my truck and all day long I'm driving anytime I want. I can reach over, hit that check in button. Wife knows I'm still somewhere back in there. And uh, so, yeah, it's not just about canoeing around. I use this when I'm driving around. Yeah. Uh -huh. And look, look at the reason John got his, what got you into it, right? How, it, it was an accident that Aaron happened, right? Yeah. I honestly, I, I look back at my resistance to getting one as very selfish. Yeah. You know, all about me. I'm in the bush. I don't want to be bothered. Very selfish. Um, meanwhile, it was causing other people stress. And then when something finally poop hit the fan, um, I was that person. I was the one pulling my hair out and it was, it was truly awful. So mm -hmm. yeah. No, and, and the other thing is you can turn it off. If you, what I often do is turn it off during the day. I don't want to think about it sometimes. And then I turn it on at night when I want to check in. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. You know, I, I remember that video, John, and I remember it scared the crap out of me and the, the experience that you two had to go through with that there. Scary stuff. Darren, thanks very much for popping on panel to ask a question. We're going to move on to our next guest. Thanks very much. Thanks. Have a good one. Next, we have a familiar face because he's got a couple videos uh, that have recently posted. We got uh, Ethan from Avid Outdoorsy Guy. How you doing, bud? Doing good. How you guys doing? Good. Good. Are you doing? enjoying your series? Yeah. Yeah. You guys like it? Yep. Yeah. So far. Quit your job, huh? Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> what do you got for the boys there, Ethan? Well, uh, I figured I would just share my experience I had with this uh, Spot X thing. Just, I've been hearing a lot of positivity about it. And honestly, I don't really have a lot of positivity when it comes to mine. So I took it on my Quetico trip. And I never had a Spot X before. Before I had the Spot Gen 3, and I never really had any problems with it. I, I could leave it sitting on the ground and it would just send a message, no problem. It was only one way. It wasn't two ways. So I never really had that experience with it. I had never had one that I could use as two way before. So this was all kind of new to me, but never had any issues. Every message always sent fine with a spot gen three. So I didn't have any complaints, but I really wanted the option to get messages back, you know, and see what's going on at home, hear from my kids, whatnot. So I got this thing because I, I, I really like the layout of it. I love the keyboard. I think that is so cool because it reminds me a lot of a, like a Blackberry. And I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in that, that extinct business. Yes. The extinct dinosaur phones. Some <laughs> people don't know what they are, but they existed way back when the, um, I like the keyboard and I like just, it, it's basic, you know, it's just texting only. And I thought that was pretty cool. 
I thought maybe I would really like the weather, but honestly, I, I'm like, ah, it, weather, it's, I'm going to be in it no matter what. So whatever. So I went with this one and it's a little cheaper than the Garmin I was looking at, like a couple hundred bucks cheaper. And I did like a bunch, I watched a bunch of videos on it to see the best tips for getting the messages to send and receive and whatnot while you're out there. And they said to like set it upright. That's your best signal, whatnot. So I did that and the whole time I was out there. I would set it, prop it up on our rock. I had my little spot rock. I'd set it up there on, on, the, on the rocks, way out away from the trees, along the water, like perfect sky view, blue skies, everything. This freaking thing had so many problems receiving and sending messages. I, it's, it's unbelievable. Like if I, if I had a true SOS emergency, I'd probably be really hosed. Like this, this thing is not, I, I, I would, I do not recommend it at all. Honestly, my mom. So towards the end of my trip, my mom uh, was sending me messages that I was receiving every day and the messages progressively got more and more concerned because she wasn't getting mine back. I would send her one like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I haven't been eaten by a bear yet. Yeah. It's all good. No worries. But she's not getting any of these things. So like three or four days in a row, she hasn't got anything from me and I would just get every one. She's like freaking out. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like <laughs> she can't get my messages. What do I do? And like, I'm worried she's going to call in search and rescue on me the whole time. But luckily I was able to get a hold of the uh, girl I've been seeing. She was getting the messages. So she messaged my mom. They talked back and forth and everything was okay. But I mean, if I didn't have her there to talk to, then honestly, search and rescue might've been looking for me. I don't know, but that's, I, I can't recommend it. I don't, it, it's, it's a piece of crap. Honestly, it is because of that fact. Maybe it ties in with the whole global star satellite thing maybe that's part of it maybe i just um I, I thought maybe the time of day had something to do with it like um it was busy like during the evening or whatever like overload with people using it i didn't know if that made a difference or not but i mean there would be a couple periods there where it would be like a 30 minute stretch where i would be totally fine it would be back and forth quickly messages back and forth within a minute or two and then once that was over, you're getting nothing for the rest of the day. So it, it was never a set time during the day. It was always random. Like maybe during my lunch on my rest day, I would turn it on to, you know, I had time. I was a little bored and I wanted to talk to people back home. Maybe it would be great for that 30 minutes. And then I would try it again that evening. Nothing. Couldn't get anything to work. So, Colin, Colin, did you? What were your experiences with with your device? Uh, you're the Spot X guy. Yeah. So last year I did my 28 day solo trip up in Woodland Caribou and had a really really good experience with my Spot there. And I got the Spot mainly for that trip. Before I used to rent a satellite phone for the fly in trips. And for a trip this long, it would just make sense like to rent a satellite phone, add, adding up all the cost makes up for more than what I spent on buying this device, buying the spot. Um, so that's why, why I got the spot at first. And then during that trip, I had really, really good communication with my outfitter uh, who kept me like up aware of there was uh, quite a few wildfires going on in the park at the time. And I had to kind of maneuver around and change my route a few times. And um, yeah, so my, Without my spot last year, I would definitely not have been able to stay out for as long as I did there. Um, then I have to say, too, though, this year I went up to Wabakimi and I did a trip there and I had kind of a completely different experience uh, staying in touch with my outfitter. And the only difference that was there was that uh, this year it was over. It was email. And last year, I was to a cell phone. So that, I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But last year, the entire trip, I had you know, no complaints about the spot or so ever. Like, it is slow. Like mentioned before, like, messages usually take, like, at least a few minutes to send and receive as well. But I got used to that. And just like uh, Ethan just said already, like, when I get to camp, I put it up on a rock somewhere. Like, usually the fire pit's a good place because there's a nice stack of rocks already. And I just hit receive. And I set up camp and I come back to it and there, there'll be messages or no messages or 
so that's kind of how I dealt with it last year. And then, yeah, so this year was a little bit different for me as well. But I, you know, like I said, I wonder if that's the, the email part, maybe. But I don't that's know. An, that's an interesting question. I wonder if there is a difference. I'd love to test that a bit. Yeah. Does everyone's uh, device do email? I know mine does. Mine, mine does. It sends yeah. the email. Well, yeah, yeah it, my, mine will send either emails or, or text, right? Okay. With yeah, Zola, you get a dedicated phone number and email. Sorry, Cody. It's the same email and text. Yeah. Like when I send the update, I it can go to both. Okay. And Mark? Yeah, yeah I can check emails. It's um, I believe it's your for one credit, you can check up to six emails huh. with one credit, something like that. Yeah. I don't I don't particularly use that option, but it, it is there, yeah. One thing I wonder too about the emails, I think a lot of uh, people as well as companies to send an email, they have like an automated, uh, like at the end of the email, like the goodbye part. And it might have a picture or something added, a logo, anything like that. And I think if it sends that to the spot, maybe that might be causing issues. I don't know. That's just something that I haven't thought about, yeah. but that I don't know. For sure right or, or even the character limit i've had that happen yeah. where someone's signature was too long and it used up the character limit and for some Definitely. reason that came in along with the end of their message i believe but not the start so right that's a good point yeah the signature because i think the spot even for the normal text messages the limit is usually around 140 digits so that's i have 160 for every uh message it's a maximum of 160 uh characters for mine so that's one big difference with the zolio is you can send up to 950 characters as long as both parties are using the zolio app which is okay. free okay yeah everyone is so different right they, yeah. they tailored them to be so different than and yeah they make it hard to compare devices because yeah. they them all yeah. so different right yeah. you can't say this one and this one are the same but this one's two dollars a month cheaper so i want to take that one right you, you kind of gotta you gotta play that game uh ethan you know i'm almost wondering if maybe there there could have been an issue or something with your device maybe or uh do, how many people here actually test their device before they go on a, a trip do you do you Try it out at home? Well, I, I tried it at home with everybody that I messaged at home before I left, which was probably a, a handful of people. Everybody that I wanted to message while I was out there, I made yeah. sure it worked. And it did just fine here at home. So I thought it would be okay. I made sure it was a message out and a message back just yeah. to be sure. And it was fine. So I don't know. Maybe it is just my device. At the same, at the same time, you got to make sure you're not hooked up to Wi-Fi because it's always going to work. In, in that yeah, case. I never was. Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah. I, well, I like. I'm going to jump in and uh, just a word to the wise. It's happened to me. Um, these are electronic devices. They exactly. need updates. And uh, last winter, I headed out on a, a cold camping trip, and I hadn't used my device in a couple of months. I grabbed it. I had it all charged up. Hit the back country, me and my buddy Doug from Pine Tree Line, and uh, we're out there. And nighttime comes, I go to send a text message, it won't work. Try, 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 it just will not work. It would work, I could send a check in, but it uh, couldn't send any messages. So I was quite upset about it. And, uh, anyways, long story short, I get home. I'm now I'm gonna get a hold of the company, right? So I log on to my account, see what's going on. And it was a firmware update. So you know what? Yeah, check. Make sure you got firmware updates or up to date because you're going to be buggered up in the back country. Yeah. Well, yeah. I made sure that was all good to go too before I left. Just it was all set, ready to go. So, yeah, I really don't know what caused my experience. But um, Ethan, Ethan, one of the reasons I got the inReach is because I'd actually read a lot of people saying similar stuff to what you're saying. Um, like I, I'd used Spot for a couple of years before, and I didn't have any issues with it. But I kept reading accounts of people saying their messages aren't sending or taking forever to send, um, and then customer support wasn't always the best. So that was kind of one of the things that turned me on to Garmin, like as a sorry as a company. Um, yeah, so like you're you're definitely not the first person that I've heard say that yeah. and i do so always i, test I still wonder part. if it's a satellite the satellite they're the only ones that seem to be on that global uh satellite system as opposed to everybody else being on the iridium i, I think that might be one of the bearings on it but uh 
who knows? Just want to let everybody in the chat know too. And I didn't say this uh, at the beginning when I was introducing everybody. We're by all means, all of us on panel here. We we are not professionals. We are just uh, device users like yourselves. And, uh, you know, we all have some experiences with them and we just wanted to share these experiences because it may, may help you in a decision to, as to which device that you actually want to buy. Uh, you know, everybody's going to have a different experience with even the same device. So, you know what, it, it's really up to you to do your research and figure out what, uh, what device is best for you within your budget. And especially with, uh, uh, your your subscriptions to these devices as well because they do all vary. Like I say, none of them are exactly the same. Everyone varies in uh, in 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 form, in in costs, in, in functionality. So you you really got to do your research on these things. Ethan, thanks very much for coming up on panel. I appreciate it. We got a few more questions in the basement. I'd like to get to. So uh, we'll talk to you soon, man. See you guys. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to part three of your series too. Friday. Awesome, man. See ya. Stuff. Thanks. All righty. So uh, we got uh, another, well, we got three more in the basement right now. We'll uh, we'll start with uh, Nate Muskoka. How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey. Can you hear me okay? We you got know. you, man. We got yeah, you. Sure. What do you got for the boys tonight? Well, I, uh, I like, apparently like a few other people in the chat here watched uh, Jonathan's uh, Zolio video i think it was over over a year ago for sure and here i am yeah. <laughs> gotcha but uh I've been, gotcha. yeah i've been used <laughs> i've i've actually quite enjoyed it and uh i use uh, i use the weather feature quite a bit i use uh, the offline maps quite a bit um and i think i alluded to in the comments that like some other people have said here, I've had some issues with the consistency of messaging. Um, and I don't know if that's just because of the amount of satellites it's able to use to, to ping messages off of. I, I don't know. I don't know the terminology to sort of describe it. But um, but I was just wondering, I mean, we're all sort of, uh, everybody's sort of backing the the one satellite device they use. But has anybody here changed from one to another because of an issue they had with their old one. Hey, hey pretty much. I, I swear I switched from the uh, Spot Gen three to Garmin. Uh, just be, well, basically because the Gen three was didn't have the functions I really wanted. Um, did it work? Yes, it worked. Uh, I found it was also a little slow with getting messages out, being the preset messages that you can uh, you, you can set into the machine itself. Uh, but I I wanted more functionality out there. I wanted more versatility with the the device that I have, and that's pretty much the reason why I switched from Spot to Garmin. But like I say, I was tossed up once again between the 66i. I also looked at the InReach Mini, but I I didn't like the fact that I had to use this for mapping and stuff like that. I really wanted the GPS function, and then. Uh, the same thing with the Zolio. Uh, like I say, and based on, on Jonathan's, uh, you know, who, who says that social media doesn't work, right? Or influencer uh, influencing doesn't really work on uh, social media. But uh, based on what uh, his video was really good on it, and he explained it quite well. So anybody that might be wanting info on a Zolio, go back through Jonathan's uh, library there and find his, uh, his review on that. But uh, you know what, it was a selling feature for me too, but ultimately I settled on this because it's more of an all in one device. Okay. Um, I had mentioned before that I rented the spot, so I didn't exactly switch from the spot to the inreach. Right. Um, yeah. Growing up, I went to an overnight camp and they had brought a satellite phone. Sorry, my dog is having a little bit of zoomies right now. Um, that time okay yeah so sorry so they had a satellite phone so that's i think like uh cw was saying is kind of like the gold standard but it's the most expensive yeah the spot i didn't have issues with but i had about six or seven trips of using it um so like we were saying everyone's experience can really differ and then just when i had done all my own research i decided on the in reach so i wouldn't say that i exactly switched from the devices but having used a couple different ones in the in reach is what i settled on and as of now, I'm still happy with my decision to, to purchase the Enrich Mini. Cool. Yeah, that makes sense. The the Spot series, uh, 
especially the rental spot series, those are usually older ones uh, that have sort of limited functionality. Yeah, it was um, a one-way communicator and no two-way. So it, the, the one that I rented was definitely uh, limited. And then the other one is uh, uh, how many people here wished at times if they're using sort of a preset message that they were able to customize that message instead of just having a preset message. Exactly. Yeah, three is not enough. Okay. Right. Nate, I'm curious what plan you went with just within your usage scenario. Uh, I think in the graph that Dennis showed, I went with the medium. Okay. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even get to use your coupon code. I totally oh. missed it. But, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, and you know what? It's It's been really functional for me aside from the weird, quirky um, messaging. So I've, I've often, just because I don't use it, Real, yeah, so there we go. Uh, the in touch, that's it. Yeah, cool. Um, it's curious. And so now and then, if it's if it's a really important message, and this is sort of the sad thing with the quirky messaging that I've experienced just in terms of timing, um, where often if it's an important message, like I'm okay, uh, I'll actually try to send it twice, but at two different time intervals because it's it just seems to be um a little spotty in terms of when that message is actually sent um and uh when it's received um which is interesting because they're all on iridium network except for the spot and iridium is from everyone i talk to is preferable except cw so it was interesting maybe that was a, a sat phone thing uh, Iridium seems to be the preferred network. and I, I found that too. When I did my research, it seemed like everybody was leaning toward Iridium. And I yeah. I don't know, I couldn't say if it is true or not, but it did seem that way. Hmm. Not, that, not that spot is, is bad, just like slightly spotty, like Ethan was talking about. Like there might be just kind of a dead zone. Other, where, other places you might be absolutely fine, but yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think the... Uh, the, uh, the quirks I had with it when I was sort of uh, like in North Algoma, so that might be like there might be just not as, I don't know, like the, the satellite coverage just might not be as frequent there. I, I'm not sure, but uh, I know Jonathan and other people have used it in places far more remote than that. So uh, maybe I've, maybe I'm expecting too much of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows, right? Contact their support. They're really good. Yeah, I, I probably will. Anyways, that's all I wanted to ask. I just wanted to get a feel of who had who had switched from an old device to a new one, or or from a from a device they didn't like to one that they do now, and and uh, that's about it. But yeah, cool. thanks, Nate. Yeah. Good seeing you. It's been a long yeah. time. Likewise, and uh, I just want to say I am I am happy with my Zolio, and it and it has sort of overall done everything i've wanted it to and uh the weather feature and the offline maps feature are especially useful to me so there you go quick question for you nate at uh yep. at the store what what seems to be the brand that people are gravitating towards uh well we don't we don't sell too many just because the volume of sales doesn't warrant carrying the inventory that can compete with online uh sellers that frequently change their price about every two to three months just because mm -hmm. of how frequently new devices come out or are changed. Um, but uh, most people that walk in just knowing they want something to do with a satellite, um, you know, messaging device, ask for Garmin. And I think that's just a brand name that they know that they're familiar with. They may just not be familiar or, with other brands that are out there that offer something similar. They just know Garmin because, you know, maybe someone they know has the watch or they've got something on their bike that says Garmin. Um, and it's just a name brand they sort of ask for. So uh, it's not necessarily going to be the one that they may may sort of go with. But I think Garmin is the name that, um, you know, people just sort of generally associate with uh, with a satellite uh, messaging or, or signaling device. All about the marketing, right? All about the yep. marketing. Yeah, yep. for sure. Well, thanks, Nate. I appreciate you popping on the panel there. Uh, always thanks, a pleasure folks. having you up here. And we'll see you soon, I hope. You got it. Thanks, Nate. Nate. That's awesome. I, I, I want to ask, throw a question out there to everybody in the chat. Uh, 
has anybody out there actually had to use their spot device or, or their, their SOS signal on their devices that they have? If you have, throw a one in there. I'm just curious to see if anybody's had to use it. Has anybody on panel had to use their uh, SOS? No. Thank goodness no, right? Yeah. I yeah. almost would have needed to on this trip, which I can share that story. Like on a recent trip I did just a few weeks ago, but I, I didn't need to. Like I was in a situation where I would have if I was in the backcountry, but luckily I was car camping, so I was able to drive to cell service. Um, mm -hmm. But it was a good reminder of why I carry it with me. Well, oh. Erin also hyperextended her knee on a recent trip north of Nikina, and uh, she's a trooper, and we found a forester road that would get us back to the car. But, uh, yeah, that's the closest we've come. Yeah. Yeah, it's scary, you know. Like I say, yeah. Uh... Uh, I'll give you an instance there. A couple of years ago, I, I've mentioned this on past trips. Uh, a good friend of mine that was on a big canoe trip with us, uh, our second day in, we were packing up to leave our camp from the second day. And he happened to come up. He ducked around a tree. And when he came up, he caught a branch on the corner of the eye. And it tore him open like, like, like this, right? And had that happened in the middle of the trip, say day three or four, when you're like dead middle of the, the trip, right? What do you do in that case? Like, you know, we, we were all pretty good with the first aid and stuff like that, but had it been more serious, we'd have been hitting that device if we had one. We didn't even have one at that time, right? So, so that was another thing. And it happened to be the same guy who suffered a heart attack a couple of years before. So to have something like this in the back country, I think is uh, it should be a number one thing, no matter what device it is. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, as long as you have that ability for SOS, all the other bells and whistles like texting, mapping uh all, all those extra things are exactly that bells and whistles right as long as you have that little sos thing on the side there that you can actually push if you got yourself in a jam i think that's the main the main thing for these things uh, they have conveniences built built into them but that sos beacon is 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 all important right all important uh we got a couple more in the basement here i'll uh bring up marty morissette how you doing marty oh marty's not even there <laughs> we'll move on to the next guy. <laughs> he, he said he was going to put his kids to bed. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. We'll bring up Donald Dakota. Donald, how you doing, man? Good, good. How are you, Dennis? Wonderful. I'm doing wonderful. I'm up here with a bunch of very hey, cool John. people and uh, having a good show. Well, that's good. Um, so just a, a couple of things there. I, uh, what Abbott Outdoorsy guys was saying uh, with this spot, I've had the same issues with my spot. I set it up in the backyard and work with the house phone or the cell phone and almost immediately messages go back and forth. I get in the back country and I'm getting pissed because the thing won't send a message and it's just searching, you know, then on the flip side, <clears throat> I got caught in a snowstorm two years ago and I was paddling out and that thing would send a message instantly. And that was in a blinding snowstorm in the back country. Um, so I think it's a satellite issue. Uh, I should have tried it today. We have a snowstorm here at my house right now. So, um, which is not very pleasant. But anyways, uh, what I found was um, the, the spots are on, they're not on that Iridium satellite. So I also rent sat phones like CW is talking about. And when I would rent the Iridium sat phone, I would never have issues um, no matter where I was at. You know, once in a while, it sounded like you'd be talking in a bucket or something a little weird, but it worked great. Last year in Tomogamy, I had a, a different sat phone rental that was on that global star or whatever it is. And that thing would constantly cut out on me. And with a clear view of the sky out in a rocky point. And uh, it was very irritating. And so what I had found out when I got back, I told the company about it and they are like, well, it's this kind of satellite and it's got glitches and blah, blah, blah. But, um, but I also learned with the sat phones too that I can rent one with a minimal amount of minutes I can call my wife and say, okay, give me a call. And then she can call me back and it's free. It uses no minutes. And I can talk until the battery wears out and it's completely free. So a lot of the Iridium satellite phones, I believe you can rent for like seven bucks a day. Uh, you know, and there's always added cost. And then the lowest minute plan you can get is like 50 bucks. So for under 200 bucks, say for a 10 day trip or something like that, you have a sat phone you can use, which is great. Um, it's good to hear like my wife's voice at home. I know everything's okay. She knows I'm fine. And like you said, Dennis, we're, uh, 
we're not 20 years old anymore. Things happen, you know? So, um, so that was the whole reason for getting into that with the sat phone in the spot. But, but I'll tell you, that's, that spot really, it, it really aggravates me the way the thing doesn't work sometimes, even though you can text back and forth. And also too, like CW said, when your fingers are cold, that's a real pain to try and hitting them little buttons and hitting the right buttons. And then you mess up and you don't know if you, it's sent or not and it's searching. So um, I'm kind of going to stick with the sat phones, I think. You know, I think that's, I, I personally just think it's a better option. Um, of course, purchasing one is kind of ridiculous. And the plans right now are just, yeah, they're just, they're crazy expensive. You know, the, the spot, uh, like going to like your team spot there, you know what it costs. Uh, yeah. My spot, I can turn it on and off when I want it. Um, and an, yeah. And another good thing about the spot is you can get the insurance with it to where like say a helicopter has to come get you well you're covered for that cost that's right um yeah up to like 50 grand or something like that because i think to launch a helicopter is like fifteen thousand dollars or something look that's right and they even have a uh, save your own save your vehicle plan that's another option that you can add on like if you're if you were to be driving around somewhere on a, on a logging road or whatever there's yeah they have insurance for that part as well. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I, I do think a lot of the issues people have talked about, I really think is the satellites, I think. Yeah. And it sounds like, like, I think you mentioned too, John, it sounds like the Iridium seems to be the most uh, reliable and dependable. Um, that is for now until uh, SpaceX gets their whole chain of things they're trying to do or something going on. We'll see how that works. But uh but I don't know, it sounds like Iridium is the way to go. So, and not knocking the, the spot, it is good. But like I said, it irritates me. So if I was in the market right now listening to this panel, um, I would probably go with a different product than the spot. Right. Probably so. And I would like to share it too. Um, I'm almost starting to think there's like a cloud of spot branded satellites hovering over Woodland Caribou maybe. <laughs> that could be <laughs> part of the reason that I went with the spot. Like I mentioned before, uh, a friend of mine recommended me to get the spot X. Uh, that's part of it. But on any uh, fly in trips I'd done in Woodland Caribou previously, every one of the beavers and the otters always had like a spot device hanging in front with the pilot. And that's what they used. So I figured, you know what, these guys do that for a living. They probably know. So, and that was part of the reason for me, like I, instantly trusted like you know that's probably a good choice to go with and but again all those trips were all in woodland caribou for me so <laughs> there might be a lot of those satellites right there yeah. that's true they may have exceptional coverage there so Maybe. yeah now now donald you you brought up a good point there eh? when you were saying about uh costs and stuff like that right uh dustin here is asking does anyone know the financial implications of using the sos button in ontario canada if search and rescue comes are you stuck with a massive bill after the fact i, I want to pipe in on this here because i i've heard many different things i know all devices offer insurance rescue insurance right mm -hmm. that you can buy it's not very expensive to buy but still it's it's insurance eh? as, as my insurance friend says <laughs> Sir, insurance always seems like a big expense until you need it. Then it's a wise investment, right? Oh yeah. Oh, my buddy Jeff is watching. There you go. I just quoted your your quote. But I've always heard, or not always heard, but I've heard many times that in Ontario, rescue is covered. It's kind of like a given right. Does anybody know anything or have any more facts about it? Because I I want to know too. Are we stuck with a massive bill if a helicopter comes to get you or? A boat comes in to get you. What's the deal there? I don't know. The, I asked Leo about that. Um, there is no definitive answer. Right. No one, no one can say for sure that you won't have to pay. In Canada, you probably won't have to pay. But it depends who responds. And there's no way to say absolutely for sure you won't have to pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you know, I, I know in a lot of cases, I wonder if the cases, uh, also if it's a true emergency or not. If that would have something to do with it, like right. if, I hope you were, so. if you were to hit that panic button for a superficial wound, maybe you'd have to pay. But if you're hitting that button because you're having a stroke, 
You know what I mean? Like, I wonder if that would play into it. I hope so, because I've heard such frivolous uses online, um, like someone ran out of water on a day hike. Yep. You should <laughs> have to set up time to lack of preparation. Yeah. I, I actually hope to get uh, uh, Tunis Richards up on panel if he's in, in here, because he, he's a... Uh, he, he's, uh, uh, Paramedic. Paramedic, right? And he, yeah. he has uh, mentioned, I've heard him mention before that they've actually had to go to calls, uh, SOS calls and stuff like that. And I just wanted to pick his brain on that. But I've also, everybody thinks you hit that SOS button that it's automatically a, a helicopter <laughs> coming to your rescue. It's not always going to be oh, a yeah. helicopter. It could be a local outfitter that's in your in your area that, uh, you know, they could contact and say, hey, do you have the ability to get out there with your boats and, uh, you know, get over there to a rescue site or something? They're going to they're gonna find the first available thing that they can get out to you, and it's not always going to be a helicopter rescue. So don't be looking for a free helicopter ride, right? Right. The, uh, the only one I know for sure where there is a bill, because I have heard of this, is uh, guys out ice fishing in the States on some of the big lakes, and... Yeah. They, their ice breaks off and they're drifting out. They have to be rescued. But what I've heard um, is that uh, they are responsible for the cost of getting their equipment back. And if your equipment, such as vehicles or four wheelers, go through the ice in the Great Lakes, you are responsible. You get a bill for cleanup. So um, I've heard this a number of times where we live in Upper Michigan. And uh, so I would say that's probably correct. But like you said, Dennis, it's not necessarily uh, uh, like the U.S. or Canadian Coast Guard going to come get you. It might be an outfitter. It might be the local sheriff. Who knows? You know. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Ronald, thanks very much for coming up. You, you shared a lot there. Pardon? You bet. You guys take care. We'll uh, we'll talk to you later. You guys all have a good night. Yeah. You, Donald. Thank you very much, Donald. All right. We'll see all right so we got uh, three more people in the basement right now. We have uh, Marty and Gary and then uh, Riley, who I seen put a number one into the uh, the chat there. So Riley, if you can hold tight with us for a few minutes, uh, give me a nod if you can, because I'm going to bring up the other two guests and then I'd like to maybe close out with, uh, with what you've got and the experience that you had with uh, having to use your SOS device out there. Uh, we'll bring Marty Moore set up right now, if I can get the button here, because he's back in the room now. Marty, how are you doing tonight? Good. Kids are down. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Had to leave real quick, man. I know you've got more people coming up, so um, so and we're almost closing in on the two hours. But I did want to share uh, a per- like a small a personal story that's very different when it comes down to um, the usage of those device. And it's uh, it happened on the first trip I had my my in reach for the first time, and I never thought it would be used like that. And I think it's it's an interesting thing. So anyway, so I was out on a winter camping trip, overnight trip here on Crown Land. I was gone and I wake up the next day. I'm, I'm just making fire and whatnot. And then I, I hear the little, you know, whatever ring that this makes when you get when you get uh, <clears throat> when you get uh, a message. And I look at my buddy Pierre and he has the same. I'm like, did you send out a message? Because sometimes, you know, you send it out and it takes like three minutes before it goes. And then it, it, it tells you that it went. He's like, no, I didn't send anything. So I grab, I grab my, my device and I look at it. And all I see is Nat, who's my wife, is in the hospital. And, and for the first time, I never thought this would ever come useful for the other way around, right? We always buy these things for the purpose of us if we need help out in the back country. But the reality too, is that it, in this particular case, and, and there's more to the, to the story. That's very interesting. Uh, that I think that that's never talked about when it comes to these devices, that it can help. It can be useful the other way around. And, uh, in this particular case, considering I was on crown land, I was about an hour drive away from my house and about the two and a half, three hour hike in the bush. Uh, it was very it was actually something I really appreciated. It did still take me like five, six hours to get home. Um, just by the time you pack up camp and you do all that kind of stuff and then and then you make it out. Um, but it is something and 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 it's my dad that was texting with me with uh, with his iPhone and I I hadn't trained him about the 145 characters. I hadn't trained him about a couple of things like that. And I was getting like all of these weird messages coming in in different timing. 
And it was just really hard for me to really understand what was happening. So um, it takes them back and forth. And that's something that I, I, I tell a lot of people is that this device is, can be super useful the other way around. But there's a couple of things. And I had a really good conversation with my dad about this. I'm like, if I'm on a 7 or 12, 15-day trip and I'm six days in, maybe you don't want to tell me. You know what I mean? Or maybe, like, because that's the thing, too. It's like, how much do you want to tr stress me out when I'm gone? And because I always send kind of my itinerary, and then they typically, unless I forget, I send in check-ins every night when I get to camp. They have an idea of where I'm at. And I usually have, like, kind of plan A, B, C to in terms of exiting. Mind you, lately, I've been doing so many rivers. It's just one way down. So, but I we had a really good conversation about making sure that, you know, in this case, it was fine because it was just it was very close to home. But depending on the situation, it could take me three days, four days to come out. And there might not be that much value for me to know that my wife's in the hospital when I still have class fours and fives to run with my canoe on, on a river trip, for example, or, you know, or whatever it might be. So uh, it's an interesting conversation that I highly suggest everybody has with whoever's the person at home you're communicating with to have that conversation with and not only one person because if if you're communicating with your wife your spouse have it with your and she's the one in trouble um you need a second person at home that knows how to communicate with you the amount of characters they can text you back and forth and uh, and the reality of where you are in the trip and uh, i thought that was super insightful insightful you know, you you bring up a fantastic point there, and I'll just uh, I'll, I'll just add to that. There is even before the day of having these things, uh, I was on a canoe trip one time up uh, in the Tilden area, and we're at a campsite there. I'd take my daughters up, and my buddy brought his two daughters up, and we just finished getting in. We camped or got up to camp, set up, and I believe it or not, I had cell phone coverage, and my wife called. And I was shocked, first of all, that I, I had a, a, a cell coverage. But she called me to inform me that I lost not one, but two relatives. My brother-in-law passed away and my aunt passed away on the same day. And this is like when we first said it. Like you say, it, it, it works both ways. It comes in and out, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but I, I appreciate the fact that, yeah, you should maybe discuss with the people you're messaging to, to have a plan. Like, you know, if something does happen, do I need to know right away? Because it could give you a totally different mindset. So you're you're 100 percent right on that, Marty. Yeah, no, it's super. It was it was the it was interesting because I never thought of it being ever used the other way around. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time out ever with a device like this. And this happened. And um I just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it was, it was a good kind of practice run because my wife ended up being very fine in the end. It's just, you know, um, a little hiccup of <laughs> being in your 30s, I guess. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, uh, it, it, you know, it's, it's a good conversation to have. Um, and, uh, I highly recommend people to do that. And alongside with that, too, because we talk often enough about how people use the SOS button for the wrong reasons. Something that a lot of people forget about these devices is that unless your life is in danger, and I'm talking like if you're not hitting this within the next 24 to 48 hours, you're dead. There are ways to rescue yourself without using the SOS button. And I don't know if you if I missed it from the previous guest, but it, that's another part that I try to train people. It's like, for example, on the Batiskin River this summer, we pinned the canoe and it we were about man that was a big pin the entire canoe was underwater for like an hour and a half trying to and we could see the crack of the on the canoe starting to tear the canoe apart right so we were just about to lose the canoe and it's like if if it would have ripped and we wouldn't have been able to to rescue the canoe out so we could keep going uh there's no way we could go down six people and two canoes in such a challenging river we would have had to have figured out a way to get rescued out but none of our lives were in danger. So I would have never used the SOS. I would have probably texted my wife back home with some directions. Uh, there were via rails close by because we got up with the, with, with, the, with, the, with the train. There are logging rails. There are local outfitters. There are other ways. Unless your life is in danger to get you out and to get help, there are other ways than the SOS. And I think that's something that's not looked after. And before we leave on trips, having those plan B um, for that, 
for example, especially if you use outfitters to bring you, if you run rivers like I do a lot, like you, I use a lot of outfitters to drive me up rivers, those would be the people I would contact before SOS unless unless it's a real, like it's an actual emergency. So Marty, just I think that's a, a very important thing about the two-way communication device is what you said is when you're pressing SOS, they're not immediately sending someone out. They're going to try and speak to you first to see what the emergency is. So if it's something like that that's non-life-threatening, you can say to them. So that's when, like I... So I, I cut my thumb on my last trip and it was a pretty bad cut. I took myself to the hospital, um, but I was parking. So I was able to do that. I drove to cell service, figured it out, went to the hospital, spent the night there, got it all cleaned up and whatnot. Um, but if I was in the back country, that the thought is would I have needed to press the SOS? So it wasn't life threatening, but I couldn't use my thumb. So I couldn't paddle. And it would have been worse if I was, like you said, on day six of a trip, I wouldn't have been able to do six days or however much to get back with a with one working hand while paddling and portaging. So that's where you can press the SOS and say, hey, look, I need help getting out of here, but it's not life-threatening. I have enough food. Mm -hmm. I'm stable. I'm okay. Take your time, but I need help. And that way you can at least, like you said, communicate. Um, I don't think, in my opinion, I wouldn't necessarily avoid pressing the SOS as long as you have two-way communication so you can explain whether it's urgent or not urgent. And like, like if, if I were in the backcountry, that's probably what I would have done and just said, hey, look, I'm stable, I'm fine, I have food, like, I just need assistance, like, I'm stuck here without the means of getting myself out. Very good point, yeah. Last Marty question. Sense, man. Last question, where does people keep this device on your trip? That's also an interesting question, I, uh, like, topic I have with, uh, with uh, my partners when I go out. I always personally have mine that's the part that i really enjoy about this little guy it's in my life jacket like i have all these pockets it's always here with me do you guys have it packed away somewhere is it how accessible do you keep it where do you keep it on yourself i it's keep it on my belt mine's either on my life jacket or i keep it mounted i have a mount on my my canoe so i have a zippered pocket in my pants so it's always in my zippered pocket just so it doesn't fall out or anything and it's always on my body like I, I find if it's on a life jacket or something, sometimes you take them off bags, you put her away. So for me, it's always in zippered pocket in my pants. I've been keeping mine packed away in my pack. <laughs> in the canoe, in my day pack, if I'm on land, I carabiner it onto my belt. Yep. Alrighty. Marty, thanks very much, man. I appreciate it. That's some great insight. Uh, appreciate Cheers, that. folks. Yep. See you, Marty. See ya. Alrighty, so we got uh, one more Gary, and then we'll uh, we'll bring up uh, Riley to tell of uh, one of her mishaps. Or, sorry, Riley, male, female. Just trying to see here. I have a blurry screen here. <laughs> we'll get to that. Anyways, uh, Gary, uh, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing fine tonight. How how are you? Wonderful. We're doing wonderful. Good. I'll be brief though, because I'd like to hear what, what, what Riley has to say as well. Um, in the springtime, I bought a Gen 4. I looked at a Gen 4 and an inReach, and the inReach I was looking for was about a thousand bucks, so I bought the spot for a lot less than that. But I do have one issue with it, and I want, want to ask if, it, if it's the same issue with the uh, that I'd get with the Garmin or or, or the Zolio or the Vivistech. When I'm putting in who I want to respond or who, who I want my, my, my check to go to. There's a, there's a pull down screen where you have to put in um, who the cell phone carrier is for, for your contact. And one thing that's a bit annoying, but if your person is not, um, if their carrier is not in that list, they can't receive any of your calls at all. And I'm wondering if that's the same with the inReach and with the Zolio and with the biggest tech. As long as the number is in my contact, I have uh, I can reach out to those people. That's simple, yeah. Good. Yeah, same. Okay. Yeah. And if I if someone if I really want someone to be able to contact me, I'll message them first via my Zolio contact number, just so they have it and can just text back to it or email back to it as they normally would. Oh, well, with Gen Four, it's it's a one way communication. So I'm not getting anything back from them, but, but I've got one friend who I want to con want on my contact list, but because he uses uh, one of the lesser carriers, he won't get any, any of the messages. Is, oh. is that the same on the inReach as well? So with the inReach, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're asking, but there's a few different ways. It's if I send a either a preset or a custom message, 
then they can then respond to that chat and we can go back and forth. Um, if I enable map sharing and I send the person the link to my map share, then they can initiate a conversation with me, even if I don't initiate with them first. Um, so that okay, that's inReach recommends yeah. using that sparingly yeah. because people can send you messages and it can take away from your credits and end up charging you. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. that's not really what I'm asking. In reach. Sorry. Yeah. I guess what I'm asking really is when you put in the, the, the information for your contact person, do yes. you have to know... Uh, what cell phone carrier that they're oh, using? No, no. Can, can, okay. So it's one so of spot the either just that. their their phone number or their email address. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't ask what a carrier or whatnot. Okay. So it's only Cole, a spot. Does, does a spot that, that, require that? I have never put in any provider for any phone number I put in there. No. 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 Because I, I, I recall when I had my Gen three that uh, maybe it was maybe it was a, for texting and, or no. And that was on the computer then. No, possible. Yeah, because they, I, I think when they, they, when you had to punch in the phone number. Now this is a couple of years ago, but when you had to punch in the phone number, it, it, somehow it come up with the carrier. It needed to know yeah. who the carrier was. For whatever like that's program. right. Yeah, I'm going yeah, they, right into my settings here. I'm adding a contact, and mm -hmm. it literally. I don't know if how much this will show. Here, let me go. Let me put your full screen here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know if that will. No, you can't read it. I'll, I'll just tell you what it yeah. says, but it, all it says okay. is first name, last name, email, and SMS or text number. Those are the only things okay. I have to fill in. There's there's no other options even. Oh, okay. And so it's just for the right Gen 3 and the, and, and the Gen 4 that you have to do that with. Okay. Okay. That's great. Thanks a lot. That's oh, cool. Let's hear from Riley. All right. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate you popping in, man. Good seeing you. Great. Thanks, Dennis. Sure. Okay, just momentarily here before we bring uh, Riley up on screen. Uh, I did have a uh, poll in the chat there. Hopefully everybody had a chance to fill it out. We've had 129 votes, which is probably one of the highest uh, vote count that we've had on one of the polls. Uh, my question was, what device do you have or are you interested in? And 50% mentioned Garmin, 17% uh, mentioned Spot, 26% mentioned Zolio, and in the other category, which would be the Bivy, the Satellite, or the... Was it where are you or whatever? <laughs> somewhere. 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 That's the one. Uh, there were seven percent. So uh, you know what? Thanks everybody for filling out that uh, that poll. Uh, just you know, kind of gives you a little insight as to what other people are interested in. Uh, with that being said, uh, we'll get our last guest up here on uh, panel, and this is Riley. And when I put the question out there uh, as to if anybody has actually hit that SOS device, I think I seen one number one on there, and that was you, Riley. So what can you tell us about your experience with hitting the SOS button? Uh, yeah, well, first off, I'm Riley outside. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm really only active on Instagram. So, um, But I guide part-time, and I work in digital marketing part-time these days. And I have had the unlucky experience, I guess, of using my inReach quite a few times. I've used every single one of these devices except for the Vivi stick for different outfitters. So they all have their ups and downs. But the only thing I've ever called SOS before on was with my inReach. Um, I've done it three times to get someone evacuated. And only one of those times was actually using the SOS button because like Marty said, there's so many different ways to get somebody evacuated from a situation without actually getting emergency response involved. So I posted in the chat there that a couple of those times, one was a kid who had hypothermia that we were guiding a big camp of like 16 people. So one of the teachers went with him and then the kid himself. And I just texted the outfitter and said, hey, can you grab a boat to come pick these kid, this kid up? We have no more spare clothes, he's gotta go home. They sent a boat in, picked him up the campsite and off he went, trip went on. Another one was a kid who had a twisted ankle. We were about halfway through. There's a really, really long stretch of portages on the northwest side of Tomogamy. It's like four kilometers back to back before you hit the Lady Evelyn River. And we had to get a float plane in to come and get that kid because he wasn't going to make the rest of the trip. So we were only two days into the trip at that point. And then the one everybody wants to hear about is uh, we were halfway down to Portage at one point. And we come across a group of four guys and they're sitting around and they're having a great time. They're laughing and they're joking and they're not really figuring their stuff out because they have a canoe on one side and a couple packs off to the other side. And we wave at them as we're passing by and they say, hey, by any chance, do you have any first aid stuff on you? We're like, oh no, what's this about? 
So they had the whiskey out and they were having a fun time drinking. Apparently they'd been there for about an hour already. They'd sent one of their friends on to go and try to get in a canoe and get help because one of the guys had fallen backwards onto a stick that penetrated all the way through his thigh. Ooh. And they were just sitting around drinking, waiting for the guy to come back. So we bandaged him up. We all have a, a wilderness first responders. I highly recommend getting that course. Bandaged him up. Um, and that way we hit the inReach because we couldn't figure out who to contact in the area at the time. And it was interesting on my inReach because I don't know what they do in the back end when they're doing this, but you press the SOS button. And as soon as that signal goes through, you get a message back from them. And they're saying, okay, can you tell me more about the the injury? Can you like give me a better position on where you are? And so you can kind of like text back and forth with them if you have the single to signal to do so and give them more details about the situation. And they'll like try to help you walk through the process. And in our case, they just ended up sending a float plane because it wasn't a big enough injury. And his buddies and our team carried him to the end of the portage and met the float plane there. Wow. Wow. And the whole process, how long did that actually take? Was it uh, like a long period of time? Now, you said that this is in the Tomogamy region, right? Was it Tomogamy region? Uh, the kids were. That one was in uh, uh, Wabakimi. Wabakimi. Okay. So that's even, even more remote. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the timeline like on something like that? We came across him at probably 1030 in the morning, and it was around sunset by the time we got him evacuated. So maybe 10 hours, 11 hours. Yeah, yeah, did so. You, did you find right. out who had to pay for the three rescues? No, I have no idea. I'm under the impression that they didn't have to pay anything, but now we towed their gear out with us and two of the guys ended up finishing the trip out with us. Uh, <laughs> so they didn't have to like try to go back and rescue it or anything. Well, that's crazy. Eh? Yeah, and now the device was it was it actually your device that you had to use to, for the signaling? Yeah, so yeah. That, so that... Like Marty, that's the one I keep in my PFD. So I always have one from the outfitters that I'll like carry on me or in like a little Pelican case. Uh, but the InReach, my personal one, is the one that's directly <laughs> accessible, right? Right, right. So but now because it was your device, you actually used it for somebody else. So there again, like Marty was saying, you know, with the two way communication with a message coming in with with bad news this here was the opportunity for you to use your device to help somebody else right so it uh it, it, even if you go on a, a a a camping trip with a group of people as long as one person's got this thing it's it's good for everybody type of thing right like you could use it to help people i really really recommend though if you're with a group get two one for one person, one for another. Because if I'm in a rapid and I drown and my inReach goes down with me, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, just, just like, uh, yeah, that, and that's what CW Gets had uh, mentioned too, right? Uh, not carry one, but carry two. So, yeah. What, what do they say? What's that saying? One is none and uh, two is one or whatever? You know, anybody ever heard that? One is yeah, none. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think Something that's what it is. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what? Thanks for thanks for sharing that, Riley. It's uh, you know what? Um, we all get into the situation where we hope we never have to push that button on these things, right? Uh, it, it's a safeguard, and uh, you know, think twice before you do push the button, but make sure you're pushing it if you really need it because that's what it's there for. So, I, I really wish that we could have got uh, uh, Tunis up here because, like I say, he has had to deal with the other end of a rescue or rescues, and uh, he could have really shed some light on the situation too. But uh, that is that for that, right? Uh, you know what? We're after nine o'clock, so we're into overtime. Overtime. Uh, does anybody have anything else that they'd like to share regarding their devices or uh, anything uh, in closing so that uh, we can kind of wrap up tonight's episode? Covered everything on my end. Yeah, I think that last point would be really here. important. Um, what Riley and uh, Dennis, you guys were talking about is that it's not always for you. It's also for the other people around. Um, I've seen so many stories and reports of people using their device to help other people get rescued. There's the really well-known story, I think, of the Opiongo rescue from KPW Outdoors that I know that's gotten tons of hits and views, and I recommend people to read it all the time, um, where, you know, it 
yeah, like it's that prime example of where they didn't have the device with them, but they were passing a campsite said, hey, do you have a device? They said, yeah, we have an inReach. They said, press the SOS. And then they kept going and whatnot. And there was one that happened a few weeks ago. I saw it was posted on the Algonquin Facebook group. Same thing where I think it was on Cedar. They saw an overturned canoe early October. Um, they had like a bystander press their device for rescue. Like I see it over and over again where the people who have the device aren't the ones who need the rescuing, but it helps save a life. Um, so again, it's one of those things that there's, aside from the financial cost, I really don't see any downside of carrying it. It's They're so small, they're so light, they're so easy to use. Yes, they're quite expensive, but um, if you can afford to have it, then it's such an essential piece of gear. I think for yourself, with uh, Marty's example, with your loved ones back home, with these examples of helping other people, like there's so many different use cases for it. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my final thought on not just my in-reach, but just on any of the devices. On any yeah, other I, device, I still agree. Yeah, don't don't wait until until you need it because you'll you'll regret it so much. And if you don't use it enough personally to invest in one, consider sharing one with friends. I don't know if about the other devices, but the Zolio, you can just switch it between phones. You can get one plan and then just connect it to this person's phone and then hand it off to your friend for their next weekend trip. Can't go on the same weekend unless you go together, but um, yeah, that's another option to keep it cheaper. And what what are the other guys on your trips using there, uh, John? What Xander uses, um, he's got a Garmin. Brad has a Garmin, I'm pretty sure. And Brad doesn't, I, I can't remember if this is the case with Xander, but Brad doesn't have a dedicated phone number, and it can be really annoying to try and contact him first. He has to contact me first or something like that. It's confusing and weird, but yeah. Mm. Crazy, crazy. And uh, Mark, anything in closing? Yeah, um, if you're going to get this type that use that works through your phone, um, one thing I learned the hard way, when you're done messaging, let's say you're at camp and you're, you're messaging, when you're done, don't forget to turn off the Bluetooth because uh, I've done that where yeah. I, it's like, okay, good night, whatever, go to bed. You wake up next morning and your phone is now at 10%. Its batteries drained. And it's because it just kept communicating with the device all night long through Bluetooth and it just drained my phone. So you have to remember to disconnect or else that, that constant connection will drain your phone. For sure. For sure. And Cone disappeared on us. Uh, Riley, you know what? If you'd like to stick around for the green room, uh, I'd like to chat with you a little bit there about uh, about your uh, your guiding and stuff like that if you, if you have a bit of time. Yep. Yep. Dennis, awesome. before we sign off, if anyone has any further questions about the InReach Mini, feel free to message me on Instagram or my website or whatever it is. I'm always happy to chat about it more and answer any other questions if there's you know something that we didn't cover tonight. And I don't want to speak on behalf of everyone, but um, definitely if anyone has any questions about the InReach, feel free to just contact me. I'm always willing to answer questions as well. That's uh, you know what that's kind of what this whole show is about, right? Is uh, trying to share information and uh, give information. So yeah. Cohen, yeah, anything you'd like to, uh, to finish with? Um, no, I think everything I can say about the spots pretty much covered. Um, yeah, I just I don't I don't keep my device on me. I, I keep it in my bag, and that's definitely something that like this show too. Like I'm I'm learning a lot. I'm fairly new to everything, and like this spot for me, it's big to keep on me all the time. In my opinion. So that's definitely something for me to think about, like the Enrich Mini, Mini or any of the smaller, lighter devices are probably a lot easier to keep on you or clip to your life jacket or, yeah, that's that's something for me to think about. So I always keep mine packed away in my pack and I just pull it out at camp and use it there. Um, but for the emergency situations, it's definitely something to think about for me. So. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Just like to say that actually for my device here, I've actually I bought uh, uh, a specific mount that goes on the clip. So the clip comes off and you put this ball mount on and it actually hooks on to my uh, my Scotty system that I have in my uh, in my boat. So like the same Scotty system you'd use for your your fishing rod holders or, or your maybe your camera mounts and stuff like that. So I actually have this in front of me and I'd like to say, because I have the maps, I have a guide right in front of me as well if I need it, right? I don't always have it on because it will suck back the batteries, but I've gone on eight, an eight day trip on this, had it on basically all day, every day, 
and come back and still had over half battery life. Now, mind you, I didn't have the screen on the entire time because that's what really sucks back the power, but it still had GPS tracking on it, knew where I was all the time, right? Uh, another thing that we didn't really touch on too much, but uh, one thing that I will warn everybody, or not warn everybody, but tell everybody to be aware of, is a lot of these devices have the ability to 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 put cookie tracks basically along. I think Mark had mentioned it there that, you know, every 10, 10 minutes it sends a ping. People could follow your progress on a trip. Uh, just be aware that those usually cost extra money when it comes to a, a plan for your device. So you may want to consider using it or not. I used to use it with my old spot device. I no longer use it on here because it costs me like 10 or 25 cents a ping. I can't remember what it is, but I was doing that and nobody was following along on the trip anyways. Right. So, uh, and each message that you send out with this device actually send your location so my wife always knew where i was based on my locations but they don't need to follow me every you know every step along along the way so that that's just my thing my preference you may have a different preference good show guys and gals it's uh good times uh tonight i uh, just want to thank every one of you for uh actually taking your tuesday evening up and joining me on panel tonight to cover this topic that i've been wanting to do for probably two years now and uh, finally, we, we got her done. We got her done. Yeah. So, Cody, nice to meet you virtually. Uh, first Thank time we've actually me. been face-to-face -face here. Mark, likewise. Colin, we've, uh, we've actually met. John, we've, uh, we haven't really met, eh, John? Just not, not in person. Yeah. yeah that'll no, change. The proximity, we'll... proximity issue. Exactly. Yeah, 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 for sure. Riley, nice to meet you as well. Uh, I'm going to drop you all into the green room. We'll close up the show, and I'm just going to uh, be with you guys in a few moments. Thanks, Dennis. All right. Thanks for having Thanks, us. I'll see you in a moment. Well, everybody, I hope uh, you all enjoyed the show tonight. Uh, it was a something that I've really been looking forward to, like I said, to, uh, to bringing this topic out to everybody. And I think we did a pretty good job of covering it. Um, there may have been some points that we missed, but like I said, ultimately, we are just all users of these devices not professionals by all mean we just like to share experiences and knowledge that we've gained for these devices if you're interested in something you know what do the research there's a lot of uh, youtube videos there's a lot of great websites out there that have comparison videos and comparison charts and articles and stuff like that that you can actually reach and utilize and uh you know what uh, make yourself a wise investment when it comes to your device because i'll tell you uh these things can be invaluable in the back country if only for the SOS beacon, uh, like I said, everything else are bells and whistles. So uh, we'll just uh, we'll just leave it at that. I uh, just want to remind everybody that, uh, or let everybody know, uh, there possibly might not might not be a Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure show next week or the week after. I'm still working on logistics for next week because uh, we are actually headed down on a family uh, destination wedding that's uh, happening. In, in like a week and a half type of thing. So we are going to be someplace sunny and warm and um, we don't leave until Tuesday evening, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to swing having a show, but keep to keep posted. Just follow me on Facebook at canoe hounds outdoor adventure show. And uh, I'll let you know if, if there's going to be a show next week or a week after, but when we do return for sure, 100% uh, we will be having uh Johnny and Colleen Keel from Keel Quest uh, YouTube channel. And we'll be talking a lot about their uh, their couples show that they have on YouTube. And, of course, all their adventures. They're into overlanding. They're into canoeing, hiking, and just uh, general outdoor uh, adventures. So be sure to tune in there. So follow us on Facebook, and we'll get all the details there. And uh, that's that about that. If you haven't already hit that thumbs up, please do. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel and you'll be in tune with what's coming up in future shows and events. Uh, we're early in the season and we still have a long season to go. With that being said, my name is Dennis Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show and everybody have a great week and keep the adventures alive.